growing up, I was into street shit. Hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I wasn't gonna be shit. But I always knew that I was. Welcome back to another episode of the Lit Podcast. And you know, I'm your host, Mr. Lawton, you know what I'm saying? And you know how I do it every time. I always got to bring you somebody legendary. And for the ones who be sleeping underneath the rock, you know what I'm saying? And the ones who out there who really just don't know. I got somebody, you know, like, that can they can run down there and tell it, tell it all, you know what I'm saying? I got somebody, you know what I'm saying, I mean, hotter than a stove, you know what I'm saying? I, I got somebody, you know, well, you know, if you, you look in the dictionary and look up backdraft, you understand how hot my man is, you know what I'm saying? You understand how legendary my man is, you know what I'm saying? Now today, you know, I don't even know, like, when I got people like this, I don't know how to bring them in. It's, it's kind of it's kind of hard, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, we done, we done grew up listening, you know what I'm saying? We done grew up, and we and you don't know when people we grow up, we, we learn things, we... We, we get lingo, you yes. know what I'm saying? We get certain things and we kind of adapt it to our life. Yes. So it's kind of like, you know, raising them, raising somebody, you know what I'm saying? True. In a way, you know what I'm saying? Through lyrics, you know what I'm saying? And like, today, no other. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, pop your bottles. <laughs> Roll your gas, you know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? We finna take a blast in the past with no other than S-E-J. Motherfuckers! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really, I really. It's definitely an honor to be here on the platform. Uh, so many legends that, that have come and so many more that's gonna come. So, you know, uh, Mr. Lawton, I salute the real, I salute the historian. And there's so many stories uh, for Dallas that, that need to be told. Um, it's a lot of players yeah. from all yeah. angles and positions of the game. So I've been blessed to be a part of that, that building yeah. from the Origins, um, you know, to to an uh, observer and you know behind the scenes type person. Now, because if you're in the game, yeah, I, I probably work with you, encountered you, or right, come right. across you. Because I'm always, uh, I like to say the most known unknown. Right, right, right. That's you know, no, no, no. You know what I'm saying? If you're in the game, but we don't work. If you haven't, we, you know, we will. I've encountered you from on any level. You know, certain points. So yes, sir. Man, let's let's let's, let's start off here. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, where are you from? I'm from Lancaster. You know what I'm uh, saying? Born in Dallas. Right. I'm a, you know, a St. Paul baby. St. Paul. Back then, I didn't believe it was medical center now. Okay, but okay. You know, it was Parkland and St. Paul. Right, you uh, know what I'm saying? Right there, Southwest. Yeah, Southwest. Yeah, uh huh. I'm a St. Paul baby. Uh, I was in Oak Cliff over there uh, by Big T, over there in Huckleberry. Oh, Huckleberry. Yeah, for five years. Yeah. And then, you know, from there, the family moved to Lancaster. Okay. And, um, Technically, I can say Oak Cliff because that's where I was born. That's where my grandpa who had. Yeah, I got you. No, you got, I got you too. No, you know, players going to keep us right. Oh, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's how we do it. You know what I'm saying? We look out for each other. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Uh, but, you know, um, grandma and them, everybody, mama from Oak Cliff, daddy from Louisiana, but we moved to Lancaster. But, and so I got my uh, development from Lancaster. And, it, you know, the Cliff had their rappers. Right. You right. know, and I was like, I'm a rep to hell, you know what I'm right. saying? That's where we go to school at. Uh, that's where we put it down at. But I say from the L to the world. Right, right, you know right, I'm right, right. Because, you know what I'm saying? We, I bring this everywhere. So, know? what is like growing up in L Town? You know what I'm saying? Ain't that, you know, because L Town, you know, back then when we were coming out here, it was country. Yeah. It wasn't a lot of stuff out here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Back, especially when I was coming back then, it was just the dollar movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, he had two movies. He had the dollar movie and the movie right here by the uh, Chevron. Movie yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. So, what it was like growing up? L Town was, uh, now, now I, I watched it go before the white flight took place. Right. Because, yes, it was land to Castor. Right. right, correct. So, when I come in, we come in uh, mid, mid to late 80s. And then, every year, you just watch it get more and more us. You see what I'm saying? Right. You watch like now, East Dallas here, West Dallas, South Dallas, North Dallas, all over the world. That's why it's when the championships we talking about the greater Southwest area, which is Lancaster City Hill, DeSoto, Duncanville. Mm -hmm. All that's us. Now at the time it was just a progression, you know, but it was always real ones. Right. Like it wasn't never like people would say, Oh, that's suburbs or this what I'm saying to you, and we're gonna kill all this suburbs. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. If you're black the black experience is universal. 
I never understood why people could call another man, dog, you come from this uh, family, you grew up like this, whether that's hard or bad. As a black man, we go through the same struggles and the same challenges in the world right. and in society. Right. It's universal. So I can never fix my face to try to uh, downgrade or, or upgrade another black man or black woman. No one is tough for us all in this world. So I don't get caught into that socioeconomic. Oh, I'm from this side and, you know, right, because it's the it, hardest. Or... It's the same water supply. Right. When you look at Dallas, rather the individual hoods, mm -hmm. when you look at the bosses, when you look at the politics and the way people play, you got real ones and fake ones. Uh, but you got you got to respect wherever you at. You know what I'm saying? Because every, it's a guy respect wherever you at. And whatever you're doing, the respect got to be there. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, because anybody can uh, humble you, you know, and anybody can exalt you. It just depends on you because, you know, when it's real, people are going to feel it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to try too hard. You don't have to uh, try too less. You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't have to downgrade. So, yeah, man, Mr. Lawton, it's, it's just real ones everywhere. Like, I travel wherever, deal with all kinds of folk, uh, including yourself. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. I, I ain't trying to prove nothing, man. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right. It just... You know, my space is my space and your space is yours. Correct. I, mean, you know? I miss my space. <laughs> yeah, I'm my space. Is, jump it. <laughs> my space didn't put no blinders on us. You know, Facebook told us up because Facebook is just like 5,000 other than the groups. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't know. With Facebook, you're probably looking at the same two, 300 people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My space had your best interest in mind. Man, man. You could be 100,000. Everybody, and you really reaching them. You was reaching them. And you were really reaching them. Like, they were really becoming fans on MySpace. Mm -hmm. like, like, people like, what you, what you got? Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Now, I'm downloading, you know, like, and you can hook your page up how you want to hook man, your page I'm up. I'm telling you, with you the music saying? and the customized feel, right. and mm -hmm. it wasn't, you know, you really say what you, what you say. You know what I'm saying, and uh, yeah, that was a right. great time. Yeah, so, yes, sir. when you was in Lancaster, who you was going to school with in Lancaster? Oh, who man. you come up with? Sure. Oh man, that's a good question. Now, when you say a lot of real ones, right, 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 right. right. I mean, we got uh, lawyers, we got doctors. You know, I know a lot of people like to keep it limited. To right, that right, 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 right. Uh, but yeah, man, that's um, if we talking about rappers that people just know. Mm -hmm. If we, are we talking about rappers? We just well, 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 let's just do so, well, we You got, mix it up Because yeah. I know some A lot of famous people That came out of L Town So many I yeah. mean, you know uh, Like my class alone uh, Tom Tom was one of us You know okay. what I'm saying Because right. Tom repped the Grove And you know He'd uh, do that But you know uh, We was the same class L right. Town you Shout know? out Tom Yeah Tom I'm real We're talking about Man I've been on T A uh, long time man. He always been solid Like them my boys. Like like we really it's genuine right. respect for these brothers. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm proud of everything they ever done and what they doing and what they gonna do. You know what I'm saying? We were recording at the same studio and sound explosion over there uh off Keystone Pope, right there by that Grants. Ah. Uh Bowling Studio was right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, that was a, a cap from um uh the bomb. Ah. You know, his brother Ed, that was their studio. Okay. And then uh, Mikey D was the engineer. I was the first one over there. That was on my second album. Okay. You know, so I did my first album at the kitchen. And then, because okay. uh, the kitchen was always busy. And then, you know, of course, George came through and uh, brought DSR over, his second, you know, group of DSR over. So, you know, we bump into them all the time, bump into Sunnyside, you know, uh, records. So we bump into a lot of people. Right. You know, and it was always love, man. Who else you like in L Town you was going to school with that then came out and, and did some things? Oh, L Town, well, uh, a lot of people, uh, Dre Emmett, Andre Emmett, RIP to Dre. Okay. Uh, Dre would be in the hood in Millbrook all the time. You oh. know what I'm saying? He went to Carter, you know, but you know, his people stayed over there, so he'd right. be over there. Uh, we, know, we know how the addresses go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and Dre, you know, Dre, I beat Dre one time in the game of 21. Now, uh, grew up with Dre. Uh huh. Everything you seen, Dre didn't miss. Right. I know he let me win. I sure appreciate that, Dre. I appreciate. He let me get that one. Not to get that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, he ain't gonna let you get no yeah. more though. You know. Um, yeah, man, it's a lot of good, good folk out there. Like Lil Ronnie, you know. Oh, yeah, Ronnie, Lil Ronnie, Ronnie, good dude, man. I mean, it's just so many good so, folks, man. So, so, who, so, what, what inspired you? Like, like at that time, you coming up. Who, who was, who was around really making noise in the music industry when, before you even got into it? Now, when I came in. <coughs> now, I was the first solo artist, rapper, from like the first okay. one to drop out. Now, I wasn't the first artist. It was a group called Starving Artists. They was the first group. Oh, Starving Artists. That was Young Muhammad, uh, yeah. Shogun, Dirty uh -huh. Red, and uh, Chris. You're right. Uh, and they had, uh, they dropped uh, Fast Life. And um, we was doing music in the 
garage. Right. Uh, Cause uh, well, I first started when I started. I just didn't hear what I like to hear. Right. Uh, so we saw that uh, we was in my um, mama house rapping on the Fisher Price. Okay. It was myself, uh, a guy by the name of uh, Larry Dibbles, a guy by the name of Young Terrific. Shout out Young Terrific. Pretty much everybody in the L, my boy SL. Uh, well, his name Fly Stevie Blackman now, but just uh, the, the rappers. And then once I took it to the garage, had a karaoke machine, uh, my boy uh, Joe Merchant, okay. a.k.a. Final Call, okay. a.k.a. Mr. ATM, the manager of uh, C-Scrub. Oh, oh. I, you know, oh, yeah. okay. The connect now. I see the pipeline. Okay, yeah, you got, yeah, you got, yeah. These are organically my real brothers. Okay, you know All what right. I'm saying. Uh, Torn or Don, who uh, later did a bunch of production uh, for me on my second album, which did did well. And all these guys, well, these guys appeared on my first album, you okay. know, Backdraft, right? First studio album. Now, don't and when we was in the garage, I got a bunch of box loads of tape because we was recording right like seriously recording and little did we know we was pretty much doing what Swish Out was doing right we had a group called Players in Time myself Larry Devils who won the championship uh, with Texas right uh, A&M uh, Diara Bright right it was uh, Charles Gurr Diara uh, his name now is Smalls Greengrass and, and you know what I'm saying if you look him up he's a serious uh, guy he's always around uh, a guy by the name of Corey Smallwood and we had a group called Players in Time because we were saying you know, in time, you know, we're going to be some players. Right, you okay. Know? So we started, you know, recording, and we did that. We was in high school, and, you know, that's pretty much what we would do. You know, went to school, play football. You know, we was we were serious about football. Right, Over right. With, uh, Coach Black. Was, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, you know they're serious about football. Oh, yeah, 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 it's like, yeah. yeah, they did that in academics, and then would go, you know, do the recording, and, you know, did that for years, and then come my sophomore year, I uh, was a guy by the – Rapping, you had pimps to out. Of course, you had Nemesis and all them, but at that point, Nemesis, you're looking at 88, 89. You know, right. You're talking about mid-90s. Right. Uh, you had a guy by the name of Pimpster. And of course, you had the lockdown inmates. Yeah. Uh, you had uh, you Old Clifford one. Sass. Old Clifford Sass. Man, R.I.P. Old Clifford Sass. R.I.P., man. Uh, and he, he's really a talented brother. When you listen to man. him and K-9 and all those guys, uh, you know, they was doing their thing. They was doing their thing. I remember he was beefing with... Uh, with Lil John yeah. and all them talking about niggas stole my crunk, you know what I'm he saying? He tell the truth because he, yeah. he been doing it. Yeah, he been doing it. Like I, I remember skipping school to buy his stuff from yeah. from from the store. I'm talking about like in the CD shop, yeah. you know, not not the bootleg shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He for, for real. real. Yeah, Lord, he for real. Yeah, I know. Like he was doing it. They was doing it. You was, you see the lockdown inmates. You see them. You know, um, Red Rum them was doing their thing. Um, all the stuff. Um, like Google. <coughs> Google Pierre Zero. Yeah. Picasso, Money Waters, Money Waters, Limp Leg, yeah. uh, Cabal. See, I, uh, you know when he had, um, but you the one was uh, putting Angel Bobby commercials uh -huh. on Flavor TV when they was like Angel Bobby, and then Google had the uh, Red Run. They know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When they had Cabal. Yeah. Like, hey man, buy my CD. Buy yeah, buy my, my CD. CD. I remember that. You know, so they was doing that. Uh, and then that uh, hustler who changed my life, a guy by the name of uh, a Diamond D. Diamond D. Diamond D. A real one, man. Um, Diamond D was cutting hair at the barber shop. Shout out Diamond, man. And D was such a hustler. He had an album. Now, and this, he one of the first. If you talking about pioneers, Master P of the city. Yes, still it. Yeah, Master P of the city. Ain't nobody on it. Ain't nobody. <laughs> so Diamond D to this day got. He just like P. He got more bad time. He look up D doing a new business. <coughs> So D had uh, dropped a, uh, his first CD called Show Them Goals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was like Starving Artists was the first group I seen drop a CD. And that was major back then. You right. know what I'm saying? It's still right. major now because y'all know how hard it is to drop a CD. Imagine yeah. back then. Right. So D dropped that CD. You know, ain't nobody really doing it but him. You know, Cottonmouth, them doing their thing. Uh, Cotton is really just coming out like with his first one. That's one you know was introducing like with Blowfly that right, was talking right, about. Uh -huh, right, and, um, a killer Cotton feel. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and uh, I think Kevin Nate they probably was working on K Rock first album because that came out probably about '97. You know, yeah, that, uh, K Rock came out by like yeah nine 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 seven. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Kevin A's death row. A lot of people don't know that about Kevin A. Well, Kevin, what Kevin A was death row? Kevin A was with death row. A lot of people was with death row. Uh, yeah, a lot. That's why I'm understanding that a lot of people was death row because the dude who introduced me into the game was uh, Tilo from the Grove. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Tilo, no E Rock. You know the yeah, doctor. right. Yes, yeah, sir. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, T yeah. Tilo, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Tilo. That's my boy. Shout me everything. You know what I'm saying? I know to this day 
You know, yeah. and he was with Death Row, messing with Death Row and everything. Came on back here with some games. He brought know? it. And knew yeah, because Kevin Nate was just a mastermind, and he found those wonderful artists. You know, with uh, Pookie Lucci and K Rock and the old Stony Crook fam. And, right. You know, they made that that great history. They made. Old boy still doing their thing. They made. They made a stamp. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh -huh. K Rock, you know, got with uh, Reggie D and Skip Cheatham. You know, and those guys, you know, really did a good radio push. Right. Now, Diamond D's specialty was the streets. But right. before I get to that. The D cutting here, he a hustler. He got a lot of things going on. I'm in high school. He drop showed him go. <clears throat> I'm not a talker. Mm -hmm. So we in the studio. I know he up there cutting hair at Mickey's. He was in right. there with Pee Wee and Jeff and all them. You know what I'm saying? And every you know the hood talking. Right, you know right, what I'm right. saying? Well, the hood help at this point. We ain't square. We we help. Right. So, you know, they like Tommy D in there. I'm everybody he rapping. I got, you know, show his go. I'm talking about I done went up there to Sam Goody Holiday, K and Walter them and bought it. You know mm. what I'm saying? This man got a real CD. Right. This man's young. This man's Package. focused. Got Versace on the cover. I go to the studio, make a demo specifically for Diamond D. You know what I'm saying? I got uh, six songs on there, and it ain't just songs. It's the songs that were made for Diamond D. Right. I'm talking to Diamond D on this album. It's like, make sure this tape goes to the brother that's showing them goals. My brother gonna go in this blue, hitting all just like the front door. You know? Yeah. And, you know, but the six songs. Right. So when I get it to Diamond D, um, I don't even say nothing. I walk in there, give him the CD, I'm gonna give him the tape and walk out. Say, man, if you feel it, get back at me, got my info in there and just walked out. And uh, you know, the, the hood knew me, you know, cause you know, I understand. I was class president three out of the four years. Right. I played football right. and I'm just good with people. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, everybody interact, and you know, to this day, you know, still interact. What you see is what you get, you know. I, I don't have an image to maintain, man. Right, what, right, what you see right, what you right, get. right. And so, uh, but, you know, he, he did his research. And he was like, you know, yeah, he official. He doing his thing. Because prior to that, I wasn't just, I was on the radio. Like back then, you can call in, you know, on the radio. Right, right, yeah, If y'all right. been on my page, you yeah. heard my freestyle. I won like 18 weeks in a, work, in a row. Right. And we on the radio. This is a tighter night. This is a K104. This is Cat Daddy, Boss. Uh, not Cat Daddy, I'm sorry. Coco Butter, Boss. Um, and a couple of more people, right. you know, that was doing that tight and night thing. And um, at the time, the people that was doing the radio was a guy by the name of Countdown John. Um, oh. I, I, John got a, a rapper now, uh, Lil Youngin, something like yeah, that. Yeah, Lil Youngin. Yeah, that's uh, his manager. Countdown yeah, John yeah, got Lil Youngin. He's talking about Countdown. Yeah, yeah. So Countdown was the first one, because at the time, the people that were rolling with Countdown was me, a guy by the name of Larry Leonard, a guy by the name of Larry Dibbles. Now, Countdown was from Holly Hill. Uh, Countdown. Uh, brilliant lyricist, you know, right. Countdown was a little old enough, but Countdown was covered in work. So Countdown, you know what I'm saying, taught us the radio game, you know how to get on the radio, call in, right. do your thing, you know, so then I started getting on the radio game. Right. And we called him freestyling, uh, you know, John did his thing or whatever, then when it was my turn, you know what I'm saying, I'm just winning weeks on weeks, so I got a name buzzing, right, like he right. really rap, I'm on here, first guy on the on the record saying Lancaster, and this stuff is documented, right. you know what I'm saying, putting the hood on Cat Dad, like, and I'm sorry, I just keep saying Cat Dad, uh, Cocoa Butter, yeah, Cocoa you know, Butter. Like, you well, know, Cat Daddy was boss. doing a lot of shit too back then, but yeah, yeah, yeah Cocoa Dad, Butter too though. <laughs> yeah, Cat Daddy came a little later. Yeah. Yeah, Cat Daddy came a little later. Yeah. I remember when Cat Daddy first got there, and I'm proud of Cat Daddy, because Cat Daddy had to go through a lot. To get respect to where he was at, cause when he first came, they, you know, he used to try to clown him. Right. But Cat Daddy held his own like a man, and now you know he doing this stuff. Right? Yeah, he came out to what Russ Parr, right? Uh, no, no, Cat Daddy was um, Cat Daddy was like Russ is like that first generation, you know, yeah. with Hollywood or then. Mm -hmm. Then there was like the uh, Reggie D's. Right. Uh, um, uh, man, Reggie D. About Reggie D. Yeah, Reggie D. Really, one was working with Kevin A. Them. Yeah. Never put that on there. And, uh, you know, we're talking about Kevin O'Fo at this point. Right. And then uh, Cat Daddy was like that third wave when they brought in J. Rudd and uh -huh. um, Lady J. Lady J, yeah. Uh, you know, all them. Okay. You know, that's how uh, Greg Street had left that second time at that point. Right. Uh, by the time he got back, that was Cat Daddy's first really introduction. They pretty much kind of ran into each other. Right. You know, back then. And uh, Greg Street would teach him the ropes and, you know, mess with him a little bit. But Cat Daddy, right. you know, right. toughened up and... You know, now look at him. I'm proud of him. Oh, really? And they know I was there. I got you know pictures with him when they was coming in that regime that that that, that doing their thing. And I mean, they they was bosses and already leaders. You right. know, at that point. So yeah, man, uh, I gave the Diamond D that. Diamond D brought me into his organization. At the time, Diamond is so legendary. It's him and a guy by the name of Dream. 
uh, uh, Dream still doing his thing, name High King. Dream then was more yeah. Arlington Fort Worth. Diamond D was Old Cliff. Diamond D had a uh, company called All Around Entertainment. Okay. Because back then, it wasn't Venice Beach wasn't even open. It wasn't right. no parties, you know, right. for, for the kids. Right. So D would uh, book out Longhorn Ballroom, book out hotels. And I'm talking about we throwing parties. You party for the city. I'm talking about racking G's every night. Right. No night ever lost. You know, so we out there working the city. Right. You know what I'm saying? He got that one album out. But shoot, that was the hustle, you know, to right. make that money. And there was a bunch of us, me, AC, uh, Diamond D, uh, Spider Man, uh, Spider Man, Spider Man, uh, West Dallas, Spider Man, uh, uh, my man Spider. Uh, man. We brought in Squeak that, that second round, you know, Young Squeak and Silver yeah. and all those guys. Uh -huh. But at the time, Steve <coughs> Ball from Dub One, you know, right. was uh, doing the beats with Diamond D. That's he had already had his first album. So then, when he came time for the second album, we were changing the game. We got and everybody who watched a lot of them, you know, they know, you know, them all around entertainment parties was for real. Because the people that was doing it was all around entertainment and right. it was dream entertainment. Right. You know, uh, George didn't want in the uh, party promotion game. He was a DJ. He wasn't in there yet. Right. It was him like Big Gill, those kind of uh -huh. guys. You know, uh, the club scene was not popping for us, of course, you not for the youngsters. You right. know, Shea and all of them had the older crowd. Right. Uh, but, you know, Diamond D killed that young crowd and it was him and our king. And right. there wasn't never no beef. Right. You know, we weren't never tripping, weren't never hating, because, you know, to them day, you know, players, you know, got nothing but respect for each other. And so I got down with them, learned that so much from Diamond D, the promotion game, that from there, you know, he put he put me on a couple of his albums. He put me on a Woo Woo Changing the Game. Okay. I was on that uh, soundtrack uh, where he did the first D-Town Bad Boys album. Okay, okay. You okay. know, that yeah. D-Town uh -huh. Bad Boy album. And... Uh, it was an honor to be a part of that. And mind you, I'm a guy from Lancaster riding with, you know, the heart of the cliff. We got, right. um, um, you know, West Dallas, Spider West Dallas. Yeah. Uh, Squeak is the cliff. Uh, we had Big Dog. Simo hadn't come in yet. Yeah. Uh, R.I.P. the Big Dog. But yeah. uh, Big Dog Simo actually passed away at, uh, at the same time. R.I.P. to those. Man, man. man, yeah, R.I.P., man. Still man, flowers to both of them, yes. especially, you know, Simo, Big Dog, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to miss y'all for real, for real. Absolutely. King of the hooks. <laughs> Simo was a great man. Yeah. yeah but a little bit before we brought a little twist in. And then Diamond D. Cousin, High C, you mm -hmm. know, had one way entertainment. Yeah. So you got them three that was doing yeah. that. And we was doing that for years. And I think... Um, kind of what... It, it was an incident, what happened. That's, the city was always... Kind of, uh, it's always been an aggressive environment, and then I think, uh, yeah, yeah, aggressive and competitive, very, very, very. Yeah, but you yeah. know, no, you know nah, what I'm saying? Nah. It, was, it was a healthy, it was healthy, right. I would say it was, it was very healthy, you know, it wasn't no body that was just uh, dry hating, right? You know, right, or right. just uh, letting the competition get the best of us, right, you know, right. it was like, man, this guy's doing that, he's doing it, yeah, like, you know, we had no problem saluting you, man, right. I see you over there doing right. your thing, and every time we even. You know, hook up, you know, and make some money. Right. You know, so, yeah, man, that's about it. It was definitely a respectable era. But, but these really. guys was serious hustlers, a lot of street guys. Because, you know, back then, yeah, man, you had to have some money in the game. We, we was really out there in the street. Because Diamond, the first one to bring, you had the radio. Well, you had the radio. You had the stores. Mm -hmm. Diamond brought the street hustle to right. the game, now the trunk, to where he was just so methodical with that. Right. And so we learned so much. Real life hustle, you know, from putting that out there. So, regardless of uh, sound scan of units, oh yeah, man, real units got so sold. sold in right, the right, so. right, right. Yeah, cause we were buying, yeah, we were buying uh, CDs, fully, you know, what I'm saying book list and everything in it. You know what I'm saying? Like it was them days. <laughs> slow day, you pulling in real money. I'm talking about over that slow day, over three hundred right uh, dollars, and you just that's a slow day. So I'm saying there's a lot of days in. In a month, you know what I'm saying, and so we really was hand in hand combat, right? Really working the streets, right? You know, and that's before he got those stores, you right? Know, Big T, you know what I'm saying, and that was really just, you know, a lot of people people was just giving him a hard time, the security, you know, yeah, you know, and you know him just being a brilliant master. Man, he had the stuff. He had Big T car. He didn't come up there with the van. Yeah, everything. I mean, when he got his van, you know, what I'm yeah. saying together yeah. and everything, he just had the stove rolling, just put the studio up in there, everything. Yeah, Snow cone machine, restaurant, and still yeah. going. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man, uh, you can't mention Dallas Hess without mentioning Diamond D. You got to, you know, matter of fact, Mr. Law, let me read this, man. Where am I from? Okay, here we go. Shit. Where am I from? 
Yeah, that's you right there. It's a lot of everybody ideas. rolling the blunt up, get lit, man. We finna go down through history. We just finna man. Cause I mean, you know, people, and y'all do your individual research, you know, mm -hmm. for for the time. But you know, it's a lot of people, a lot of players, and I won't get to name everybody because there's so many people. If you hear your name, salute. If you don't hear your name, just please put it in the comments. Man, we going we salute you because everybody matters, right? Yep. So we got Blind Lemon Jefferson. He was the first. You know, do your research. We talking about the first musician. He wasn't born in that. Blind Lemon Jefferson put it down first. You got Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, Roger Borkins of Soul Text Record. Roger was yeah. a teacher up there at uh, Townview. Uh, you got Johnny Taylor, first artist to go yeah. platinum. And they all uh, had his friend over right over in Oak Cliff. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh -huh. Johnny Taylor, salute to Calvin, his yeah. grandson, is still <coughs> repping the legacy well. You got uh, Fela Fresh Crew, <laughs> DOC, Nemesis, Vanilla Ice, Tevin Campbell, E Rock the Witch Doctor, Pimpster, Quint Black, Goldfinger, Cottonmouth, Blowfire, uh, Big Bear, Grasshouse Music, Big B, aka Mr. Rain, Red Rum Records, Star D Records, Lockdown Inmates, Oak Cliff Assassin, K9, you got Boss, you got King of Show, uh, you got Steve Austin, DeVille, The Butcher Boy, Big Dank King, The Good Vellas with Suave Dre them, Ghetto House, Starving Artists, Diamond D and Diamond Records, K Rock the Rockler with Kevin A of Iconic Records, his first art, Riley Boys, Link, Jilo, Erica Badu, who was then known as Apples, and then she signed that deal with Universal. You got SEJ, Empire Thing Records, that's me. Uh, you got Gator Man, Big Chief. You got Bobo Luciano, who was a member of Nemesis. Dallas Diamond Life Records, Immortal Soldiers, J Juice, Ricochet, Money Main and Perion, MC Dope, Chase Patton. Salute to Chase Patton. He's yeah, a real one yes, in real life. Chase Patton, what's up? Man, all of them are, but yeah. salute to my boy Chase. Doski G. You got Stampede Records, headed by Bowleg. Lions Den Records, Real to Real Records. You got Gemini. You got Powerhouse Records, which later turned into Clout. Yeah. You got DSR's first group. That she George had two versions of yeah. DSR. Uh, the first one, and George was a store since the eighth. George Lopez just for real with him and his cousin Trini. Apostle Paul, uh, Mr. Pookie and Lucci. That was Kevin A. Iconic Records, his second wave of artists. They yeah. got major radio play. Then Powerhouse turned to Cloud Records. Salute to uh, Cloud Records. Salute <coughs> to Six Two DOC artists. Salute to Toronica. Salute to C Pong, C Mo Bushy, and Lil Twist of Diamond Records. Uh, salute to Lil Zay of BOC. They uh, Tyler, but them boys is yeah. Texas. Them boys yeah. definitely Dallas. Salute yeah, to repping, Nico. Repping it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'll tell you, Mr. Law. JJ the Freestyle Prince. You got Mr. Jen. Philly Station, Squeak Mac. Uh, Young Terrific, Shice House Records, Big J. You know what I'm saying? You got, um, we got, uh, where was I at? We got Doe Man. Sunnyside Records, Kiki, the Freestyle Pro, VBZ, Grifter Records, the Slump Masters. They was really doing it, you know, real, real. They were very real innovative. <laughs> you got John John, the drummer boy. You got Mr. E. And salute to John and Mr. E because they yeah. doing their movie thing right now. Those are some yeah. good, hardworking brothers. Yeah. We talk about female rappers. You got uh, Taliso. Uh, you got Dirty Harrier. You got GGC. That was DJ Drop of Definition DJ Group. It's definition DJ. You got Miss TB, the Queen of Mash. You got yeah. Dixon Circle uh, Dixon Circle Records. Yeah. You got Brittany Shante, who was the first singer to win BET, straight out of South Dallas. You got the Row Music when he hit Ice Cream Paint Job, and you got Big Bank, who put Dallas on with the Boogie Movement, uh, with the Row and Lil, and Lil Will. You know them set it off, and. Um, yeah, man. I mean, and that's just kind of the first wave. And there's a you know a couple yeah. of more players. People like Sean at the club. Yeah, Trap Star Clicks. You know what I'm saying? Now Trap Star and him was not and all that. See that I kind of yeah. You know we got to be Pacific. Yeah. Because you got the first generation uh -huh. uh, bleeding in with that, and then you got like when you think of Trap Star, Trap Star they was like that second wave. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, Trap Star. You got that's that's that radio. That's that boogie movement. Uh, but before that, you had the New Dallas Movement, uh, what uh, what uh, QP set apart. Yeah, that came you know. after. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, that I'm came sorry. after. Please edit yeah, that, man. Nah, you good. You good, sure. Nah, you good. Nah, yeah, that came after. Because, you know, they were young black and they came sure up. Was. You know what I'm saying? Black. You know, with Rich Mind and them. You oh, know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it froze only with Big Wheel and them, the yeah. shine and all that. So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. but we but we go, you know, we, we, so, it's a so, lot. So, break so we, down. We, yeah, it's a lot. We, so we wanna go we wanna go all the way through there, okay. So like back then, 
what was the process of you making your album? You know what I'm saying? How would, like, how did you, you know, know what beats you wanted? How did you even get the studio time? And how did, you know what I'm saying? You mean the first album? You know what I'm saying? Now, when I was with Diamond, D learned a lot from Diamond and right. Silver. And D always had vision. You know, D encouraged me. D was like, man, go on, you know what I'm saying? You got a little, you know, I believe in you, man. Go, go on and do your thing. You know right. what I'm saying? You probably can, let me see what you do. Right. Sing or swim. Right. Uh, and then I got with actually his producer Silver, right. you know what I'm saying that we did uh, work with a couple of more people. Pretty much me and Silver, you know, I went to go see Silver over in Leanne off Wheatland. Right. And uh, hey man, just just I was always a money making guy because I was always be busy. I right. always be right. working. I right. mean, I can do one of those guys that make all kind of money any kind of way. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, got with Silver, paying Silver whatever Silver wants, and Silver tell you. Jay don't negotiate, whatever you right, say. Right. All right, bro. Right. There you go. Go to the studio. Silver crank out what he crank, buy the beat, and we just did it like that, you know, right. over time. Just buy the beat, write the song. Then I went up to the kitchen in uh, off South Dallas. Right. Uh, you know, working with uh, Flashback, who was my engineer, and JP, and all them. And uh, yeah, man, just did every record one by one. So, you know, for that bad draft album, my first album. So, what was the process, man? Because, like, mm -hmm. You started getting a lot of big names on the, you know, especially on the second album. Yeah, the second album was definitely uh, just building up. You know, I'm just a big fan of start small, build up. You know, because when I did the backdraft <coughs> album, you know, it was one song at a time. Right. Focus on that, get everybody in there. Then when I got the album done, uh, one of the first guys to go to nonstop graphics because at the time everybody was going to a company called I See Your Graphics. Okay, you see what I'm saying? It was I See You. Uh, so I, you just dropped the jewel on us. You first wore nonstop. Well, I wanted the first. One I, first. I, I know Rolo uh, from Diamond Life, Rolo on Lonnie G and Jr. was right. probably a monster first. I know right. they. I was the second website in Dallas. Rolo right. on Lonnie G was the first. Steve right. Cortez did our website. Okay. Because okay. uh, nonstop is Aaron Cortez, Steve Cortez, and Brian right. Cortez. Right. Now I never heard of these guys. You know, um, you know, did some research. I just seen everybody was going out see, and I just had to be different. Right. So you know, I just heard of some new guys in town nonstop, and I just heard a guy named Aaron. You know, I'm right. the white guy. Yeah. Let's go. And seen a young Hispanic guy with hella talent. Yeah. Wow. And just was cool, and we just clicked. Aaron to this day is one of my best friends. Yeah. He started yeah. pumping out work in the Man, city. he's a Aaron. Yeah. Is just him and his brother Steve yeah. and, and Gil and uh, me and uh, Mr. ATM. Joe again, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We went up there. I can't not give Joe his prop because you know me and Joe was a one-two punch, you know, right, on, right. on a lot of that. You know what I'm saying? He was just you know, really good, good, good dude, man. So what, what was it like? How were you reaching out to these features? You know what I'm saying? Was it like just because you knew, or it was it because you know you had a team and management hooking these things nah, up? You, you looking at the CEO? Yeah, yeah, yeah you doing policy. everything yourself. You doing lead work, and, and we really own it like same way. I mean, you connected. You uh -huh. know, back then it wasn't just as simple as call, email, or right? Phone. Correct. I've always been on the streets. Yeah, on the streets. I met you right on, on the, the streets. streets. Like, right. <laughs> no joke. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, right. So you know when Lil Flip, I got Lil Flip first CD. Joe was with me, uh, Mister A Ten. Right. Was at Redbird. Uh, Flip and Hump and all them. I got the first one with the Southwest Wholesale on it. Right. And you know we just seen a guy, you know. Uh, you know, they walking, you know, when they walk with the entourage, they right. were coming from Houston. And uh, you just seen the guy with wearing green. And then, you know, he was like, my name Lil' Flip. I'm like, man, you pretty tall to be, you know, Lil' Flip. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Look like Big Flip to me. You right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then he had his leprechaun out. Right. And, you know, I bought it. Went in there and bought one right there uh, from K. Right. You know, and uh, so I still got that same one. And they know I'm telling the truth because they say, this, this ain't the re- a release edition. That's right. what I'm saying. Southwest Wholesale, Clover G Records. And I still got that same yeah. CD. And that was just one, you know, um, all of them. You know, then that's how we just, you know, would get their number or whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then just, you know, at the time I was working on the album. You know, and then just connected with them. Right. You know, but one thing, me and Twan, when we was working on the second album, which was one of my best-selling Pretty much, I'm just a big fan of man. If I come to you and I come to you right with something that's undeniable, right. you gonna rock with it, man. Fair. You gonna rock with it, Fair. and they rock with it because I made sure it was on point, made sure it was jamming. I made them all that they can't refuse. Right. You see you what know. I'm saying? <laughs> we took care of whatever we had to take care of. If we had to take care of, cause one thing better, if he charged you 
three dollars. If you give him something he like, he right. may get he may charge you one. Right. You know, he may just hey, hey yeah, man, he let's show do him it. Love, you know what I'm saying? You know. So we gonna So yeah, man, you know, and it was um it was great like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um the album came together, worked with so many talented people. Uh Bowleg always show love, you know, Stampede would have us I always in that club diamonds, you know, right. working. Uh, Gator Man, everybody, Bobo jumped on there. Right, you right, know right. what I'm saying? And that's SCJ, which you can stream now. That's all. Check yeah, that out. Yeah, what is it like working with Bowleg and Gator? Go, oh, man, we did a song called What That Tell You, and you can stream it. The interesting part about that, uh, I tell people, I say Gator Man is just um, an amazing artist. Like, right, you know, right. I just think he's just a, such a gifted worker. Right, 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 right. And uh, when we uh, went in there, Bobo Leg tell you the truth. Uh, so we did the What They Tell You record. Gator go in there and be Gator. I done did my verse, and then, you know, Gator just did his verse. You know, me and Leg like, man, that damn Gator, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Leg went in there and did his thing. But, you know, these guys, it was all, it was just an authentic feeling. It was just the time and the culture, you right. know, and the energy of it. Right. So, you know, um, because when you think about that time, uh, even being, you know, of course, like when we look at uh, like what Chief was doing. You know, Chief uh, Hustler, man, just a good dude. Man, shout out Chief, you know man, what I'm saying? Yeah, for real, man. I really want some guys on my platform, so I really give them their flowers like they deserve, you know. Right. There's a lot of misconceptions in the city, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm just here to just really just to really, you know what I'm saying, give people to have that platform, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even though they got their own platform, but you know, just really to show yeah. that and share that. Yeah, uh -huh. When you look at, like, and the reason I bring up Chief, you know what I'm saying, because uh, Chief, when I think of my class, like when I came out solo, it was Chief Gator Man and myself. Right. Uh, Chief had came uh, from under Pemster. And then, you know, uh, first time I heard of Chief, uh, Roro had gave me a CD, you know, and right. I was out there hustling because, you know, I was me out there with Spider Man. Right. You right. know, and then Roro was like, he has a, a cat uh, named Big Chief uh, at the time. And then he had, uh, gave me the Dirt Go, Dirt Go Chief album. Actually, I just emailed Chief that album. I mean, I didn't know, I know, you know, if he still had it or not, so I just sent it to him. But I'm just saying, uh, these guys go back, you right. know, to putting in that kind of work where you got uh, Chief was doing this thing. Uh, then, you know, he hooked up, of course, with the whole Your Tongue record and did the work with uh, Kevin A. Gator had just dropped the Worldwide album with the uh, Walk the Block. Right, you know, right, I came right. out with the uh, with the backdrop. But I'm just saying it's just a blessing to see as we go on right. and, um, you know, to see these guys grow. You know, right. we all still doing our thing, like I'm doing the movies and stuff. And, right. and still, we, we all have throughout the years weathered these storms right. and still hustling, you know, and you ain't never heard no no beef, you ain't never heard no dissing because it's, man, these are good brothers. Like, they are genuinely focused on the craft, focused on the grind. Right. And I'm proud of all of them. Right, right. Me That's too. Right. Me too, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, they really ready to stuff to their guns, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, and stood the test of time. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and still, tough, and still are authentic with it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's sure. a, You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people can't, you know what I'm saying, keep it going, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, that's a hard task to do, you know what I'm saying, yes, sir. and relevant. still be relevant, you know what I'm saying, because yes, motherfuckers, sir. all the people who we talk about, it's still people still talking about the people to this day, like, damn, where yeah. they go, I can't find them, you know, big motherfuckers will change their IG names, you know what I'm yeah, saying, yeah. and you know, us Dallas, then we ain't really just too much social, you yes, know sir. what I'm saying, on the media shit, you know what I'm saying, so it'd be like, it's a real brand, yeah, yeah, like, it's really the streets, you know, not it wasn't internet hiding behind this real grind. Right. Like the city was too small. You got uh, limited clubs. You got limited studio. That's why you really didn't see a lot of riffraff uh, from us. Uh, Cause we was already going up against the hill. Right. You know what I'm saying? You had the Houston guys who had been winning and making money and doing right. so many great things. Yeah, we didn't have time to be bickering and. We we already going up against the impossible, you know. We talking about just the you got to keep in mind you got to pay for studio time, you got to right. pay for producers, you got to pay for uh, print, you got to right. pay for uh, distribution, you got to pay for networking, travel, you got to right. watch out. You still on the streets, you got to watch out for the laws, you got to watch out for the jack boys, mm -hmm. you got to watch out for man. Right. What don't you got to watch out for? The set up chicks, it's still right. Dallas, right. Uh, and we we it's always been rougher. If anything, rougher. 
you know, in that era, you know, so we, we didn't have time for Tom for it. Right, right, you know right. What I'm we just didn't have time for that. And I remember, too, at that time, too, Young Hustles was out, too. Yeah. You know, My boy K. Yeah. K. used to work up there at the radio station. Yeah. I'm sorry, not the rest of it, but up there at uh, Sam Goody with, 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 uh, with uh, K and everybody, K. Spain. It was K and Walter, and K was the third guy, you know, uh-huh. and then, you know, that's before he had got with Clout. You know, he had a song called Three the Hard Way. Yeah, uh, Three true, the Hard Way. True story about K. I just salute the K, man. Now, with that song, Three the Hard Way, like we had won, I had won on my first album, We Do. We we had Hometown Hero. Right. Right, off 97 9, and we had won like four times, four, five times with that song, We Do, which you can get off streaming. Three the too. Hard Way. And uh, yeah, he got us. He 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 beat us on one of them nights, man. Yeah. You know, salute to K. Right. You know, but it was you know, and that's how it was though. You know, so I can't never say I didn't. Uh, my song was on the radio. Right. Know, on my first album, so man, it's a lot of history to me. That's a lot of history, lot man. Of history. So like, what did you learn on your journey, man? That mm. you know that that really. Got you to where you at today? I would say just believe in people, mm-hmm. because if you believe in people, believe in yourself, and keep your faith in God, believe in God, you can't go wrong. Because right. it's such a marathon. Like when we were talking about Trey Lee and Prince Rick, right. uh, you know, before those guys was doing the pawn shop records, like Rick would be in the car, you know, with me, because right. you know, uh, I asked him every I used to date his cousin at the time, and Rick was always the youngster who had talent. Right. You know, it was a couple of them. It was Trey, it was Mario. You know, it was a bunch of them over there with the pawn shop. And of course, Trail and Rick. Look at right. the history they made. You know, yeah. Trail yeah. and Prince Rick. Uh, these guys had already shown drive. You know right. what I'm saying? And so, you know, for them to just come and uh, roll with, with me, and they was on uh, like my underground. Uh, Did you see me in Murder Dog and Block the Block? You know, that's like one of Rick's first times rapping. He's right. on there a couple of times. Yeah. And the same thing that Diamond did for me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? These guys was already talented. They had those initiatives, and they just took it to a whole nother level. Right. So it was a you know blessing to see them blow up with the records. Uh, Walk around the club, the Mr. Yeah, Hit that whole, yeah. the bad little bros, and yeah. I'm proud of them. Uh, I'm proud and of them. I, I like how you mentioned, you know, Block of Block magazine yeah, and yeah. all that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm surprised a lot of that went away. You know, it, it was starting, I ain't gonna lie, yeah, that I'm magazine was starting to make, you know, a lot of us bubble, you know what I'm saying, right, in right. the city, you know. And I was and, blessed to be a part of that first, because right. yeah, Aaron had created it. Right. Actually, it was a spinoff of the Streets magazine from a guy by the name of Danell. Okay. And uh, Aaron was doing the graphics for Danell, but Danell just couldn't keep it going because it was just a lot of money. You know, you got to think about the advertising. He got to do actual print and all that. Right. And he kept it going. And then when Danell couldn't carry that, uh, as long as he did, you know, when he had cello muscle, you right. know, and all those guys when they were doing their thing. And then shoot, um, I believe Jilo was in there a lot too. And then Aaron, you know, took block the block. And what I did was took the game that was given to me because I got to shout out uh, Ed Bell, which is Cap's brother, and George Lopez. Okay. Because, see, what they did, like for me on my second album, they gave me the list of the stores of all the mom and pop stores throughout the South. Uh-huh. So when I was traveling, I was always in every state, you know, in the car, you know, me and So I you knew where to go. You had a pipeline. Thanks to those guys. And then I gave that same information to Aaron, uh, Steve, and his pops. And then actually would take, you know, boxes and, right. you know, without their hustle them. And that's how, like, you know, even when Block the Block won that SEA award from doing work with uh, Trey Dove, who's a Central Texas legend. You know, it's ain't black Mexican now. Right. But Trey Dove won that SEA award. He worked with Ozone. And, yeah. You know, but yeah, uh, Block the Block won that, that SEA award. Yeah, that was... Man, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I remember that block the box sure did. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, you show you correct. You know what I'm saying about that? And it's like it's crazy, man. Cause you, cause you kind of you, you know what I'm saying? It's like you take me back down memory lane right now. You know what I'm saying? And um, I want to make sure we catch all this. Cause you know we stand lit. You know what I'm saying? You okay. know, like for real, y'all just don't know. You know what I'm saying? It, it, the city just always had 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 that go. You yeah, know what I'm saying? And like I, I want to know like what 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 was that process? Mm-hmm. I want my people to know out there. What was the process of going to take them albums and going to put them in consignment in, in these moms and pop, pop stores? Like, oh, how man. would it be? You know what I'm saying? Like, how would you go in there today if you had you a box of CDs right now that you were trying to say? How would you go in there if I was the if I was the owner of the store? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How would you come and approach me? You know what I'm saying to put your CD in in front of this in front anywhere in this store? 
you gotta be real first of all. It ain't right. like where you're from is how you come. It's how you come. You had to actually go. Right. So you pulling up, <laughs> and it's like I'm meeting the store man. He may have heard or he may not. I got this here product. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, I'm Jay man. I'm from Dallas. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing my thing. I uh, got my album, such and such, such. Obviously, Burn the Backdrop was easier to sell. Right. You know, I had little flips and little thug and everybody on there. But yeah, man, and then from there, it's really a meeting. It's really a conversation. Because at this point, this man got the power to buy 20 or 30 off you just off the bat. Off you know the bat. Saying? See, mom, some mom, you got the Sam Goodies and all them would be consignment. I mean, you come back, you sign right. the paperwork. Right, yeah. You know, you give them 10. This is yeah. before bootleg hit, so you give them 10. Obviously, right. if you come back and it's two, he owe you for eight. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? That you got some mom and pops like in East Texas or uh, uh, Waco, you know, uh, uh, those guys off uh, Waco. I forget his name, man. He was a, uh, off Dallas Ave, off uh, Waco. I can't think of his name off the bat, but he was a good brother. You know, in the East Texas, Longview, Tyler, Benita, Belita Gill, and her brother out there in Longview, they, they'll just buy him off for you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? George will just buy him off for you. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Kappa will just buy him off for you. And, you know, it was uh, that. Uh, you had James selling CD. I mean, that's just a dab. I'm talking about just wherever you would go. You right. know, you'd go to Terrell. Because right, uh, Pimps right. sold a lot of records out there in Terrell. Yeah, and, shoot. Pimps yeah. sold a lot of records in Big T, too. Yeah, Pimps was. You, you know, know what I'm saying? I remember, I remember, I remember, uh, I remember buying the tape. Well, him, and they got the old school on the hell with the, with the uh, rock wall yeah. on the hell with the helicopters. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> That's the one he had a ransom note on there. You know what I'm saying? I forgot the name of the album, but uh, uh, man, man. If you had a ransom note, you ain't gonna never. I know he got that Al Green lick on there and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like for real. Yeah, yeah, man. Like man. So okay, so like that process on consignment. You know what I'm saying? How would you approach that same situation that they do to the internet? You know what I'm saying? Like I can't. How can my how can my people out here who's trying to, you know what I'm saying, do this music out here, mm -hmm. make a dollar? Because it, it seemed like the internet making more money than that. <laughs> yeah, because it's more, more, first of all, you don't have print-up fees. So it's right. easier. Uh, of course, you still got to pay the producers or whatever. Right, and then, right, you know, right. uh, the upload fee, which ain't nothing compared to the thousands. Right, where you right. had to go to A&R Records or go out there to Clay and Midwest Records. Or right, go to, Green Room. Yeah, go to Green Room, yeah. you know, to do the uh, printings, you know, and when you... You know, you you spending five or ten racks, you know, every cycle, cause you you doing the CDs, the jewels. Now you don't have that that necessary overhead cost. Right, 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 right. Now you get payments per stream or whatnot. Once you put them up, like I got all my uh, content up on the SCJ uh, apostrophe, uh, not apostrophe, parenthesis, the street director. Uh -huh. uh, matter of fact, I got a new album coming out. Um, uh, all my catalog, I got over twenty one records. I actually had twenty six. But I couldn't put them undergrounds on there because, you know, that was them flows. But then, you know, I uh, put some screwed, uh, me and DJ, number 62. And so those are streaming now. You know, I got a new one that's going to be dropping uh, this after this interview. So y'all be uh, looking out for that one. And that one is called Ain't Too Good for the Hood or Too Bad for the Suburbs. So check that one out. And that's up to date. So, you know, you put it on there. Right. And at this point, it's on all streaming platforms. So it's just a matter of what your what your what your fix is, what your bag is. You know, right. whatever your favorite streaming platform is. Right. You know, you can pull it up and your your people that's gonna support it, you know, they're gonna come across right. it. They however come they across come across. Right, right. right. And, and that's global, so it's all over the world. It's no way to control those markets. Right. You know, back then you had forty, fifty stores you was working in, or like what I was able to do, actually I was one of the first people to work with a distributor, um, this is in two thousand two. And I was like 18, 19, and I got a um, deal with Gonzalez Music. Mm. Uh, now, everybody was going through Southwest Wholesale right. at the time. Right, right, And I met with uh, Walter D. Them out there at Southwest Wholesale. And I just remember, and, and Derek and all of them, and I, uh, some just, I don't know, man, just one, I don't know. And Rob and all of them, you know, I just, uh, some was like, I'm going to hold off on this. I'm not right. going to put this on there. Because what I didn't like, they was like, you know, yeah, you know, we, we going, you know, it's a 90-day window. You know, back then, you was on the streets. You didn't have 90 days. Right. You know, you had to rip and run because I could sell in the store. You always had product moving. Whether I'm hand-to-hand -hand combat, that's direct money. Uh, whether it's show money, you got consignment money that's going slow, then you got your distributor money that may roll every 30, 60, or 90 days. When you, right. when you see Nas talk about 
uh, every every three months new jury. You right. know what I'm saying? It's those cycles. Right. But cycles. But yeah. Gonzalez was just starting, so I got with Wade over there in Gonzalez, uh, Louisiana, and uh, we were able to uh, get Sam Goody. I mean, I, at the time, I ain't thinking I'm just doing some amazing stuff. Because I'm, I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm like, you gotta realize it's amazing to us because right, like. Right. When we seen her, you know, and, I, and nigga, we on the block doing whatever we doing, and we walking up in Sam Goody's or CD Warehouse, yeah. and y'all shit right there, you yeah. know what I'm Best saying? Buy we had it right, Best Buy, you know what I'm saying? Like square business. Cause they would well, see what they did at the time. What you what you like about the corporations is they buy bulk. Like right. how corporations, like for instance, if you got Fye, right? Right. Fye, where this store may buy ten or twenty pieces. Right. And you may hit three, four mom and pops there. Right. Fye may buy. FYE mess around by 500, right? And see what they'll do, they'll buy that bulk 500. Of course, mm. you get them a little better rate right. because they buy so many. Right. But the minute they sell one, they buy the rest of them. So that's what the thing is. So they'll put it in the store and make their money based on Masses. what they was doing. <laughs> so, you know, when you was trying to, you know, you know, get the corporations, you know, and I was just able to do that same way we did. You know, I didn't have no label. Right. You know, uh, that was me, real life, working with DP back then. You really had to go, go see about it. Right. Had to go talk to them, pull up to them, right. build a rapport with them, and then help them see the vision with what they call a one sheet. Right. They had a one sheet. One sheet. Hand. One sheet. Yeah, you put all your information on there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You, you, they you gonna release it. <laughs> it. And they'll decide. You know what they want to do it. They want to fool with it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, they they you know definitely that always yeah. support. This is before 2005. Now come 2005, the bootleggers. That was just a whole different game. I noticed the CD game because you got 2005 bootleggers coming through. You just had uh, CDs declining, and that was before the MySpace really started pushing right, in that social right, media. Right. E facts, e facts. Before that, that's when that's, that's when that's when we started coming off the street, started coming in, and we're seeing with the them phones started becoming more accessible. You know, they started yeah. coming out with the window phones and yeah, all right. that stuff. You know, the ringtones, and you know, and yeah, then Corey right. Cloud started picking up the clubs. Oh man, once yeah. Corey hit those, Corey yeah. took it to another level. <laughs> Corey is just you know, Corey is such an unsung hero. Uh, you know, even uh, the vision that he had with the right. artists, and the, of course, B. Brown, right. you know, bringing, uh, you know, uh, Hot Boy and Young Nino, right, you know, right, 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 with the work with that whole clout muscle, which, you know, even Chief was a part of that clout with yeah. just all, uh, Lil Peace and mm -hmm. uh, just the movement, and uh, Corey being instrumental and such a brilliant thinker. Because I ran into Corey then for the first time, like when we was in Tyler, he was still powerhouse. Okay. And we was out there at Eminem shop. Um, uh, Eminem, uh, Mike Clark, that was his shop before Mike got with Swish House. Uh -huh. I can't see Mike had that store. Cause my, one of my best friends is Nico Hernandez. Now, Nico got uh, Club uh, Suave. Suave in Tyler. That my boy Nico. Oh, no, you say you can't miss me, my nigga. You can't miss me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga, yeah. You want it. Yeah. That's where I met Jay Juice. You know, uh -huh. did, did a show I Yeah, Jay Juice play, man. Say. <laughs> and, jo and George uh, from T Town was so instrumental. Yeah, and so so much because uh, George had uh, been a boss, you know. Uh, people, George really changed the trajectory of uh, DFW when he did. He did two versions of the North to the South. Right. You know, he did the first with the White Cuff. Now, by the time he did that North to the South two, and had all the Houston and Dallas artists on there. Right. You know, that was just huge because George took us to market. George just gave me a bunch of CDs, and you know, me and Joe and Twan and all them was just going, and that kind of got me introduced into so many markets. Cause I had that song Empire thing on there mm -hmm. before I even dropped my album. So and then, then George would be key, you know, to um, hey uh, SEJ, you know, go, go, you know, have some shows set up for me. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, George, George has always been a guiding force. You right. know what I'm saying? So it wasn't a shock to see the success that DSR had. You know what I'm right. saying? They amazing artists and amazing people. Right. And George is just George always had a heart of gold, man. Yeah, so yeah. you know. Um, you, you wouldn't be there without George. You wouldn't be there with Diamond D. You wouldn't be there without without Ed and Cap. You know, yeah. uh, over at the bomb. So yeah, yeah, Mr. Lowe. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of them. It was a lot of them, man. Like yeah. man, who man, like like who did you who 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 how have you worked with in the city? Oh, now it's interesting because it's like if we talking about the videos. Because when I started doing the videos a little bit after towards uh, two thousand five, two thousand six, when mm -hmm. I created the street director. Um, and then you know it was 
I did like the definition DJ for a video. Right. You know, it was just out there, and that's kind of where that street director name came from. You know, uh, was, see, a lot of people think it's like, oh, he's saying he's street. No, it's saying I started on the streets because yeah. I just can't sit too still. So yeah, I'd be in the club and I, you know, would have a camera. Right. Then I just started filming. Right. And just taking pictures. And then after a while, you start to realize, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm just leave it at that. The cameraman is probably. When you think about a standard club, let's, especially before all the cell phone stuff. Right, right. When you think about it, you're going to pay 10 or 20 to get in. Right. You're going to pay 10 or 20 uh, for a drink. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's even if you buy for somebody. Right. But back then, think about all them club pictures you got. Oh, shit. I'm holding down to $20. Yeah, Some 10, to depending on who you fucking with. You know what I'm saying? If it's set up right. Cameraman was making more money than the bartender. Cameraman had time making more money than the promoter. He had over here. Say they fucked the game up too when the cameraman came out with the pop, with the thing where they just spit out right then and there, and they ain't had to wait. They just poof. That's kept secret, and I'm so observing. I'm just yeah. sitting back watching the promoter. He got to pay for everybody. Got to right. pay for the act. You know, right. he wasn't. You see him at the end of the night. You know, he over there. You know, on the counter or wiping his head. <laughs> Bartender ain't tripping, you know what I'm saying? You know, he just, you know, doing what he doing. And, yeah. uh, you know, the security get they set for you. They just glad there ain't too much, you know, crazy stuff happening. Then you look at the camera, and nobody's paying him no attention. He got more money than everybody. He just been in that corner all night. All night. Racking money. Racking money. All, you know, and he just so low key. Yeah. Ain't nobody messing with him. Ain't nobody thinking. But they just thinking at the time. See, now media is such a big world. Right. But at the time, people really, you know, you pull out a camera or something in, other, in a non-club setting, right. thing, they better put that camera up. Right. You know, put that camera up. So I'm just sitting back watching, you know, these guys, people like uh, LP Lot, you know. And then you, uh, when MySpace here, you see people like Tao Campbell, you know, start just really killing the photography game. Yeah, and then yeah, I'm like, man, yeah. this guy's making money. He got all the baddest. Yeah, yeah. You know got, what I'm saying? He got it going on, shit. <laughs> and you started seeing when, you know, Green Room, like Green Room did Big Tuck uh, Southside the Realist video. Uh -huh. You know, at the time, Green Room was doing like $500 video. Boomtown was coming in from, from H-Town. Yeah, Boomtown. You had B-Childs coming out here. Uh, yeah. Warren Silas had started with the video. And yeah. Kang Bear. Yeah, Kang Bear was really doing this thing. Like when he did the Dallas uh, Don't Dance, We Boogie. Yeah, and, uh -huh. uh Yeah, and these guys, you know, Kang Bear was... They, they they been killing the game, you know. Right, they, right, I had a right. camcorder. I got my <laughs> hunch, you know. What I'm saying? I had a little low camcorder. These yeah, guys, we got to get in somewhere. Shit, I'm you, yeah, and exactly. I just you know, like I say, same thing. Music, just work your way up. Jeff and Darren, who's still doing this thing, right? You know, and then you know, I'm watching them, you know, and then learning from these guys. And I've always given them props, you know, and right. always shown respect. You know, I ain't right. never one of them people that just like it's all about me, about me. Right, I've right, always right. worked my way up, and uh, even uh, to the point of working with like Arthur Muhammad. Uh, getting some uh, good uh, quality work with the Carter High film, you Man. know, and then up into, you know, the quintessential movie. So, man, what was it like working on that Carter High film? Oh, that was the, one of the most exciting times ever. See, man, we get say, man, we get some exclusive here, y'all. I'm gonna uh, tell y'all, man, tune in, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about the Carter High thing. That was just such a brilliant world of its own. Right. Uh, Arthur Muhammad, Greg Ellis, Miss uh, um, uh, Gray, uh, Ty. You know, just everybody who was involved with uh, that entire process, you know, and because I came in, uh, I had brought some guys down, uh -huh. you know, because I heard they needed some extras. Actually, uh, Ray Page gave me uh, RIP to Ray Page. Ray Page was one of the most plugged in people in the city. Uh, Ray had passed away from COVID, but Ray was like, yeah, man, I heard they need some uh, extras, you know, at this. They got, he didn't tell me what it was for. Uh, he just gave me the number, and it turned out to be a guy by the name of Rafael Santiago. So I hit Raphael up, like, I heard y'all need some extras for a scene. And at the time, you know, I was coaching, so I had a bunch of, I'm like, bro, I got about 16, 8 feet tall dudes, you know, I'm going to bring them down there. Right. Uh, so we did that, took them down, and one guy in particular, Josepha Sanders, who was the uh, uh, lead actor in, in, in uh, my first film, Quintessential, uh, Joe, just uh, to this day, all I know, we was back there, we was extras in the pep rally scene. Uh, fast forward a little time I look up Joe at the front He done got him A Carter High jersey And I'm like Man this guy You know How does all this happen So You know And then from there It was just We were just You know Extra We were just extras Right And so You know Just And it was just uh, The philosophy Me and Joe Just you know Thugged it out It was about It may be early Stay late 
Whatever they need to do, it's like, because at first they were like, go sit in the extra room, but I like to make myself useful. Right. I don't care who you are. You got all EP. First of all, the thing that, that got me about Carter High, people be like, oh, it's a bootleg movie. That, that movie was not no bootleg movie. If you seen something that looked low quality, you just bought you a bootleg. <laughs> so that, that was, they, that was a real, that is a real movie. You see right. it on Netflix. Right. When we first got there, that's the thing that shocked me was the right. production. I ain't never seen that many people standing around. Right. You know, I'm talking about all kind of folk. It's not just black folks, Hispanic, white, it's all kind of folk. And they had the uh, professional cast and crew of that show, Dallas, you mm. know, was working behind that. And, mm. and the director who actually went to Carter was a guy by the name of Arthur Muhammad. And Arthur's one of the right. most historic, uh, look him up, yeah. uh, directors in Dallas. And he's so humble. It took like the second or third day before I realized he was the director. Because Arthur's the coolest dude ever in life. Like, Arthur's so cool, man. You're like, you think, you know, some people, you can imagine them walking in there and they got a golden cap for them. One, and they pull one of me. You know, like, he, they have, oh, nigga, that's you. And he's just so cool. You just yeah. see him around. All right. And, you know, I remember, uh, you know, we, 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 um, extras. But I ain't standing in that extra room. Right. I just learned, you know, watching. Okay, if you got all these guys with all this heavy stuff. Right. Ain't nobody going to say nothing to me if I pick up this thing and help them carry it when they walk around the set. Yeah, you took my job. Yeah. And that's what I do when I work for the union. You see? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? When we set up the movies and all that. (laughs) And so I'm just starting to notice nothing moves without these guys. Right. So wherever they go, we're going to go. Right. Ain't nobody going to tell you uh, you're helping. So that's the thing you know. But what I'm doing is (laughs) I was doing videos and pictures. Mm-hmm. I never been on a movie set. Mm-hmm. That was my first instance of seeing it up close and personal. And the director showing love, the cast and crew showing love. He ain't. He could have easily at any time. Hey, make it out of here, man. Go on back in there and had to sit down. That's why I was in the movie so many times. Uh-huh. See, Joe got a lot of things, but then I started noticing uh, Arthur, his wife. Everybody was cool. Man, I just started noticing, you know, the person who do the photography. She ain't really not coming to oh later on. We there early. I'm gonna go get my camera and just start taking pictures. Now at first they got on me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, they were like, they actually hemmed me up. It was a real hem up, child. Uh, it was yeah. a real hem up. They uh, were like, yeah. hey, who was you? What did you taking these pictures for? <laughs> it was uh, uh, Big John, Arthur, and all them. You know they they get, but you know I'm cool as a cucumber. But I just let them know. I talked with Arthur wife at the time, told you. I'm taking pictures, and I looked at him in his eye as a man. Bro, you got to trust somebody. <laughs> I could have took them pictures and put them on the internet, but I just told him, you don't know me, but you got to trust somebody. <laughs> and Arthur them looked at me and went on, got to do what they did, and he trusted me, and ever since then, uh, my love for film. Right. Uh, has been on so that entire project was the most positive experience with so many talented people that movie broke so many barriers I'm talking about you go from one day chilling the next minute I'm sitting there saying I'm talking to you Mr. Right, Lowe right. I'm talking to Charles Dutton of The Rock right but, they be like okay shit well we finna do this I'm talking to Pooch Hall and I'm talking about, it ain't on no hobby I'm talking to Pooch Hall right this guy was just on the game right like, like that, I mean, this is Vivica Fox. I'm right here with Vivica Fox. This the other day, I'm looking at setting off and all her movies in the 90s, right? And these people are really putting a, a real movie together, and it's a classic. What so, Vivica, what did Vivica say to you? No, Vivica was just you know, uh, um, Vivica was what did Vivica say? Vivica was, <laughs> I, I mean, it was just she's just a consummate professional, yeah. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, man, it was just she was. It was just funny because she was Hollywood, not like a, in a bad way, but it's like we taking uh, right. filming and she outside, we in the stands, and you know, they directing how they do it. Then Vivica sitting over there and she just pull out a little mobile fan. You know, and she just, you know, it's just like, man, look at this old oh, rich lady. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, man, Mr. Long, that just yeah. was just one of the, the greatest experiences of my entire life, and that right. just changed my entire perspective. Man. And, uh, you know, us leading to doing the film. We're going into the film world, so salute to everybody. On Carter High, everybody, no matter what your role was, because that, to me, was the forefront, because so many talents. Yeah, it takes everybody to make that happen. Ooh, man. When you think about it, Even the ones you don't see. Even the ones you don't see. There were so many people on set. For real. 
and people like Greg Ellis, you know, this guy's a Dallas Cowboy. This guy's in the NFL 12 years. Right. And you would be surprised the people that are the got the most money and the most power and the most are the coolest people. Right. Not ego tripping. You know, not being difficult. Right. Just just as real as can be. So man, I, hey, I coming got to work, coming to work. Man, just just nah, soul for brothers, man. I just feel that. Man, I got to salute Carter High, and every chance I get, I say something about Carter High and Arthur, because Arthur done put me on a few movies, and you know, and Arthur jumped in my debut film, Quintessential, the movie. I'll make sure y'all can tune in to that, too, yeah, you know Quinn, what I'm saying? And Quintessential actually won the most uh, film festival, over 170 film festivals, being in 185 countries. Uh, you can Google it on uh, uh, several platforms. You can see it on Amazon Prime. You can see it on uh, Facebook Watch. Uh, you can see it on YouTube. Uh, you can see the wins on IMDb, and you know uh, that was Josephus and uh, Linus Tulane, uh, where they uh, did their first uh, starring role. But then we had Michael Hamilton Jr., we had Quanticus Jones, we had uh, Keanu Robinson, uh, we had Justin Montgomery. We had over 153 amazing times of people in the Deer Shakur, uh, and uh, one dog. 153 people. You, you, you in see, you see what I'm saying? Say we see. Just because you don't see people, you know what I'm saying, out here, you know what I'm saying, don't think you don't see them. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Don't think they ain't doing nothing, you know what I'm saying? That's that's the whole point of this platform. It's like yes, sir. people came out here that, like I say, that uh, came and touched people, and then as they as they grow, they yes. went out in the other ventures, you know what I'm saying, and expand, but still come back and still give you, let you know, you know, I can still do this too. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So, man, like, like the process, man, like, because I really didn't get everybody who you worked with in Dallas. Cause you don't work with a lot. Everybody. Who, who have you in Dallas that you ain't work with that you want to work with? Oh man, I done came across everybody. You know, like damn. I mean, from I, I ran into everybody. Whether it was the digital or uh, via my friends like Yellow Beezy. Uh, man, I ran into Yellow. Honestly, Yellow was by himself at Redbird Mall. Right, right. I ran into Yellow Beans in the courtroom. He was right. paying a uh, ticket. Right. And this is organic meme. Same right. way I ran into you. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? right, right. You see what I'm saying, man? This man right here, like, I hear everybody, so, man. Oh, so, you know, brother, you know, I've come across, man, if you name them, I've, I've come across them. Oh, you really? You know what I'm saying? That's real stuff, man. You know what man, what makes you have a real passion for? Because I see you had a passion like I had a passion yes. for the city. You know what I'm saying? What yeah. really thri what really thrives you, man? Well, to see it grow from nothing to something. Right. Because we, we, you know, to physically there and still be in the trenches there. Right. To see people like smash the top and make their moves. Right. To see you grow. Right, to right. To see people like real life street stars. Grow. Right, right. Uh, to see people like Big Talk Facts. Right. Uh, uh -huh. Big Facts. Uh, so facts. Uh, to see people like... Uh, uh, the one Charleston White beefing with. Right, you know, see right. him growing. To see Charleston do his thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? To, to see all these people, even to see Mo3. I, right. I sent him a Facebook message when he was alive and well. Right. You know, and I let him know then when he was alive and well. Bro, you are definitely one of the top ten. No, I ain't put a tie. I said one of the most top songwriters and talents. Right. Uh, in Dallas history, while he was alive. And he liked the message. Right. So you know what I'm saying? It just so, you know, no, so so right, so right. He got it. I never got right. a chance to meet him personally, uh, but uh, the talent, man, it's just like all the politics. I do not indulge in that because I understand Facts. the street stuff. Facts. I keep it about the music. I keep Facts. it about the art. Right. I like all of them. I don't get caught in the hood because I can't tell nobody how to feel. Mm -hmm. I can't tell nobody how to feel, and I respect everybody. So I don't. I'm not. I talented young man. R.I.P. to him. I, I man, told him when he was alive. Mo uh, three was. He, he, he was he was like you know everybody be getting misconstrued but he was like no other you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. like he had his own lane you know what I'm saying like he had his own lane and he did it well you he know did. what I'm saying you look at his work it's like a Tupac work right. Tupac did people don't know uh, realize Tupac got signed in 1990 Tupac was dead by 1996 yeah so and that don't include an 8 month stint in jail right so whatever right. you see from Tupac, you have to understand he did that in those times. Same thing with Mo Three. Right. Mo Three's in double digits albums. Right. You know, but talented. The work that him and his team did. So did man, yeah. I salute all. Of them. I they salute. They just got Plex. The whole team just got Plex. Right. All Plex came in. Rob Stovall. Rain, Rain, Rain made sure everybody got their Plex. You know what I'm saying? And so, so I salute love everything the, they yeah. do. Uh, you right. know, I love everything. Uh, Trap Boy them doing. I love everything that that the Go Yeah them doing. Everybody who's new, I love what 
Prince and Trail uh, Lee was doing. I love yeah. um, even what Baby C was doing back mm -hmm. when they do it like that. I mean, everybody, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a big fan of, of the arts and even the newer people right. coming in like R.I.P. Ducky P. Yeah, oh yeah, Ducky um, P, man. That boy man. right there, man. Yeah, yeah man, Ducky P, man, it's safe. Salute to Ducky P. It's and I was crazy. reaching out to him, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he... Man, he you know he was like, man, he say, man, you really, man, you really fuck with me, man, man, come fuck with me on my YouTube. I'm like, yeah. man, I got you, man. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, like, I'll be yeah, yeah, here, yeah, man. yeah, for real. Right. I ran the missing moment. Yeah, man, song. say, man, that that was, man, that was a beautiful soul, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like for real, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely on his way. Yeah. And salute to his daddy and salute to money. Yeah, Rose. man, Armani Rose and Bush, man, 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 two times, man, like man, that, yeah. oh, that, oh, that's a that's a that's a that's a real, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't, I don't know. They they are the small Jacksons. You know what I'm saying. You know they ain't that big, but they big. You know what I'm saying. They they out there getting it. You know what I'm saying. Bushy, Bushy, a diamond records guy. Yeah, they got, got, yeah, they got the Bobby Bushy. and Whitney coming out. You know what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, real dude and uh, super talented. You know, yeah. him and Jen, Mr. Jen, some of the, yeah. you know the, uh, some of the greatest lyricists when you right. really, you know break them down. Right, right. You know, so you can ain't no you know, man. It's just so many legends man. and just guys that are. Uh, just rocking. Even uh, you see what Lil Twist is doing. He's a Diamond Records guy. Yeah, know? man. Uh, yeah, man, it's that's just, facts. It's just you know. I'm it's proud it's so of many of them, man. man. Like you like, talking about Toronica, the work Toronica. Yeah, Toronica. Yeah, Toronica. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I, you know, hey, and she grew into her stuff. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Did. She really did. You know what I'm saying? She did. And she turned out to really, you know what I'm saying, to really expand on what she grew yeah, on to. She did the bad yeah. beat. Uh -huh. You got Tamika Pearl, who mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. was the road baby mama, and mm -hmm. the work that the road did. Right. And, right. And Tamika still doing her thing. Yeah. Because when you uh, look at uh, the women, we were talking about the women. We were talking about like yeah. Brittany Shante is a South Dallas legend. You okay. know, uh, she's the first one to win on BET. Right. Uh, she uh, uh, went deep uh, on American Idol. Right. And uh, even in New Orleans, performing live with a bunch of talented, uh, you know, on that uh, live circuit. Uh, so she's still, you know, rocking and, and doing an amazing job. Um, and, you know, that's out of South Dallas, you know. Straight out of the shit, straight out of the side. Yeah, Erica Badu. Man, it's just so many talented individuals. And what I'd like to see us get more to, uh, you know, we all Dallas, we, we you know we talk about Dallas, we talk about Fort Worth, you know you talk about the Twisted Black, you talk about the Immortal Soldiers, uh, shout out to Renaissance, oh, yeah. uh, you know it's just so many people yeah. um, that's been uh, like uh, Mikey D, uh, yeah. Mikey D and um, Roy Roy Richards, one of the first artists out of Fort Worth, they had the uh, left and right shoe MCs, oh. uh, you know. Um, one of the original, you know, back when DOC and all them was coming out. Yes, sir. Right. So it's a lot of people. Like, it's a, remember me and Aaron uh, Cortez used to go out to Fort Worth uh, and deal with a guy by the name of Alize. I don't know where Alize at. But then that's not even just limited to Dallas Fort Worth because one of the tightest songs I heard from uh, East Texas, a guy by the name of Lil V. You know what I'm Lil saying? V. Hey, man, Lil V. I think he's from Pittsburgh and Marshall. Right. I don't know where he at. I've been looking for him. I know <laughs> him and a guy by the name of Mr. Arain. Uh -huh. To me, is one of the most talented right. artists because he he had an album in '97, and I know he was on that Big B record. Right, you see what I'm saying? So, man, it's just so many artists that contribute. You know, uh, past, present, and then the future. The ones that you know gonna come, and these younger guys that are rocking and you know making their wave. And I'm for one, I'm interested in. Uh, thankful to be alive during this time, and you know we gonna see these guys grow and. Right. Expand and just you know continue to do some great things. So where you see yourself in the next five years? Oh, we are definitely pushing the film. <laughs> hey man, I got twenty one records that's streaming right now. From Burn right. the Backdraft, just type up S E J, uh, the Street Director, type up Empire thing. My stuff on on stream. Right, right. Got a right. new album that you just be watching this right now. Ain't too good for the hood or too bad for the suburb. That's well, you got the features thing. on there? Oh no, that's just me on that. Okay, I did All the right. beats, did the recording, cause I know. Yeah, I'm probably looking at maybe my final album there because I'm going what? in full film mode. I have okay. a, All right. a film after quarantine. Right. Uh, that I got quintessential out, my second film after quarantine, starring Keanu Rogers okay. and uh, Justin uh, Montgomery. You know, that's a okay. uh, that, that's coming. You're going right. uh, I'm gonna turn the pressure up on All that. Right. So All I'm, right. from there I got like twenty films wrote. Uh, that went out and check my IMDb out. Like right. you see, man, I got like uh, almost a hundred wins. Right, right, right. Globally. You right. know, so it's like 
Bro, I'm here. I'm around. Right, right. And we pushing that envelope. You see, I'm connecting with the people we need to be connected right, with. Right, right, we right. We doing it for the city. We own positivity. Right. Um, boss talk. That's when I said the people, Charles White. You know, okay, people, boss talk. Yeah, yeah boss one talk. One on one. Yeah, like the, what they doing. And, and then like I love with Charleston and uh, Anthony Dewberry. Right. Yeah, you know, Dewberry right? at the West. You know what I'm saying? Where that? Oh, man. He, he, you know, I, you know, I'm a connoisseur. Yeah. You know, I, Back I love day, it all West they, Dino. Yeah, they bringing it, Mister Law. You mm -hmm. know, so I know I love with Jeff in real life. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Everybody and, and Charlie Moe and, and Rook and, right. and and Rook and his guy, his woman. You know what I'm right, saying? Like right. we don't yeah. at no point do Angel we White, yeah. we we don't need yeah, Angel White. I'm yeah. sorry, I said one yeah. she does that. <laughs> and, and she is super talented, like uh, Jessica. I see low. Yeah, you know, uh -huh. uh, salute to you. No salute to Twan the Dunn. Man, my man boy, city Twan. looking beautiful right now. Really, I, I see it on. Yo, you know, um, man, you, tell you know what I'm saying. Do you think anything? You know, I could. You know, for so long, you know, like I done talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Like the city of Dallas. You know what I'm saying. You know, do you even know what the city of Dallas known for? Dallas. Like what's our what's our what's our marks? Like you know when you look at when you look at at, um, at New York, what you know New York for? Oh well, first thing, the biggest thing out of Dallas, Dallas Cowboys. That's the first thing. Uh, when you look at, uh, let me tell you the read. First of all, we need to understand Dallas Cowboys give you. See, I work in films globally, <laughs> yeah. everywhere except North Korea, and I'm yeah. trying to get it up in there. You can get it in South Korea, but North right. Korea is a little bit tougher. Right. Everybody worldwide know the Dallas Cowboys. That's right. why they're the number one sports right. franchise. Right, right, right. Uh, when we look at Dallas, see, we were trying to get some, some economic stuff. We were trying to get to some life stuff. Uh, when you look at Dallas, first of all, you would have a hub of major corporations. Mm -hmm. Um. Is twelve um, Federal Reserve banks. Uh, well, there's one. It's um, like seven globally. The one that covers America is broken into twelve, and Dallas has one. Mm. When we see all, uh, you know, the one right. downtown, the Federal Reserve Bank. Right. It is money. Um, numerous billionaires on Dallas. Right. Numerous. Right. Uh, yeah, of course, there's a divide. You know, because you know when you look at. It's interesting the demographics. Because everybody say for the city, for the city, for the city. When we look at it, we not gonna go to Fort Worth. We just gonna talk about Dallas. Right. When we look at Dallas, you probably looking at um, for us, for you know African Americans, for blacks. It's less than uh, what? It's probably about three hundred thirty thousand of us. Okay. Um, that's three thirty total, maybe two hundred thousand of age above eighteen. Right. So give or take, you know, more females than males. So you probably looking roughly, or very roughly, maybe one hundred and twelve to one hundred thousand. You know, give or take the numbers. Okay. Uh, a majority of the blacks in Dallas live in Lancaster City Hill, Duncanville, or Desoto. The migration is taking taking place. So if uh, somebody somewhere had an idea of trying to recreate the destruction of Black Wall Street, they gonna try to hit this side. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because that's where. Everything is at right. Uh, just why you see the state championship, uh, you you see all of those type of things. And that's just the blacks. Of course, we have the Hispanics that are doing their thing. You know, right, you got the right, whites right. that are doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, not to take anything away, because the Hispanics, are, Hispanics have been, we the black and brown the same. Because the Hispanics, the one that really kept a lot of this stuff going, you even see the power structure of the city. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna see George Trini. You mm -hmm. know, you're gonna see Franco. You're gonna see the Hispanics gonna get behind right, right. the artists. And cause I know they done supported me on so many right, things. Right, you know, right. like I just remember one time being dead broke and going down to San Antonio, man, and coming yeah. back with racks. You know, in one day, mm -hmm. no joke. You know what I'm saying? So, not to d differentiate or you know, I, all I'm saying is. When you look at the, the, the city, the influence and just the brand of the Cowboys, we can go anywhere in the world and right. we have a hall pass. Right. No matter where we go. So you, and then the internet, you know, you can take it wherever you want to take it, globally to the world. But what I'm saying, like, New York, you know, New York has, you know what I'm saying, the big app. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Los Angeles, the city of the angels. Yeah. You know, Dallas is the city of what? Yeah, well, you got it. depends on who you ask now. Nah, with, it's, in, nah it's, it's written in stone. Yeah, with us, it's Triple D, right? Okay, yeah, we call it Triple D. Now, white people call it Big D. Yeah, they call it Big D. Yeah. Yeah, but, it's, but, it, but we know as the city of hate. I, I believe that's perception. I believe you see what you focus on. You know how long they've been calling us the city of hate? I mean, we can, we can go it's in. The, it's written in stone. It's like they call us city of hate. Because ever since the day Kennedy got shot. Right. That's true. Because I can see 
uh, the influence of that, and then some people would say Carlos Marcelo, and you know, uh, yeah, from the mob, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, say, you know, he still got his restaurant. Yeah, I know. All that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when we look at that, if yeah. we want to take it on that, level, right? Uh, now, but but for the sake of the interview, I want to say this: you see what you focus on. Uh, just I I believe powerful people and strong mind and strong will people. I believe we can shift. Right, energy. right, 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 right. Because. Ain't nobody shot you, stabbed right, you, right, beat you up. Right, Ain't nobody right. saying F you. Right. And people show you love and respect because right, the way right, you carry right, that. Right, 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 right. So if we didn't see that hate, right, right, you see right. what I'm saying? And we, everybody not going to support you. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, did they shoot you up in your car with you in it? Right. So they so show why, you love. So why our people feel like that? You know, like like we never had our stamp or we never had our way or we never had our shine or people always blocked us or people never opened up the gate or, you know, it, people never showed us how to get the money or people never, you know, well, why the city feel like that? They shouldn't because you right. got money. Right, right. This whole studio is money. Y'all right. can't see what I see over here. Yeah. Uh, the, every person watching this, you got at least $20 in your pocket. Artists, you done sold records. See, I believe comparison is a thief of joy. Right. <clears throat> you need to focus on who's there. You need to focus on What's going right? Right. Don't focus on negativity because at the end of the day, ain't nobody did you nothing. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nobody uh, trying to kidnap you. You ain't looking over your shoulder. Well, that's on Louisiana talk. Ain't nobody did you ain't nobody nothing. did you nothing. What you But that ain't Texas right there. That's Louisiana. Yeah, my dad is from Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. I salute you. I ain't dealing. But, I mean, if we see negative and who all didn't do, that's like having a party and complaining about who didn't come. Right. You got people in the party. Say what's up to them. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? If we focus on the good and then keep in mind, we still in the game. It's like driving. Right. If you're going somewhere, and let's say you're supposed to go to Walmart and you drive it. If you pass by Walgreens, are you finna stop at Walgreens? Or are you gonna keep driving till you get to Walmart? You just hadn't arrived yet. Just keep going. Mm-hmm. You'll get there. Don't get caught up on the all oh, I'm here. Or I'm supposed to be here. I'm not. Just do what you got to do to get there, and you're gonna arrive. Fact. You know, don't be all this, and then you get into a complaining session, and then it's like you're not being, you're not being a hustler at that point, man. Because right. you know Dallas has always been. Uh, we can't compare this market to this market to this market. We got to deal with the reality of what right. we got. Right. But it makes us a certain kind of people. Because if we cry babies and we don't get our way and then we, you know what I'm saying? You feel right, what I'm saying, Mr. Right, Martin? Right, it's just... Right, right, right. right that's the... Work. You got to get it. You got to get it enough. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you motivate them. Network. Y'all motivate us. We motivate y'all. Fact. At the end of the day, y'all watching us, you could be anywhere. Right. And I just want, as a person, as interview, I want to thank you for watching this and taking time to hear the name. Right. And just know that the love and respect I got for you as a viewer, as what you go through in your life, and God has led you to this point to be here at this point, you matter. Thanks. You can change the world. You Thanks. can do, even if the world is whoever you're around, you can impact everything in a positive manner. Now, you got the opportunity to be a king or a queen, or you can be a tyrant. Right. It's up to you. Right. I hope that you choose your higher self. Right. Focus on the good and make good. Don't worry about where... Um, where you're not at, just know where you're not at. You get what I'm saying? All right, I got you. You can always be. Uh, facts, facts, facts. You know, that I was talking to my my associate producer of Quincy Denidra. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like we're not going. Say we don't. We say we not going. Yeah, yeah. Say so, hey, man, just don't don't be negative. Like don't worry about it. Just keep going. All right. Keep going. Keep working. Keep the faith in what you're doing. Right, right. You know right, what I'm saying? Because right. I just feel like cry, I've been crying ain't gonna get you nowhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That ain't gonna do nothing. You know, hate <coughs> ain't gonna get you nowhere. Uh, the, trying to diminish somebody else's shine ain't gonna get you nowhere. Trying to take down what somebody else is doing. What's right. wrong with telling somebody they doing their thing? Right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we can keep. And even if it was a certain shift, we can we can shift it. Mm-hmm. You know, we have the power to make this whatever we want to make it. And you know Facts. we want to make it, Facts. you know, great thing. We want to do great things. We want to build upon great things, and we got this opportunity. And we are alive. We are healthy. We're still in the game. We ain't worried about. Cause think about it. And, and let me ask you a real question. Mr. I, I ask for something. 
let's say right now me and you talk. Uh, I don't care if it's one viewer or if it's one billion views because over time, we speaking so much real, the content is going to be right. timeless. They're going to yeah. check in when they check in. This is what it's for, right here. It's going to last timeless. forever. Right. This, this moment, what we're going through is going to last, last forever. forever. So let me ask you this. So if we understand that, and we know what we're saying is true and from the heart and it has validity right. Right. And, and value, and we know we're talking past our own lifetimes, why not tell them something real? Why not tell them something and tell that person in the future Regardless of what the circumstances is, you can push everything forward. You can be the one to change the world or inspire the next person to change the world. And you got to, they got to understand too, you're going to bump your head. Absolutely. That's the whole point of learning. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't mess yeah. up, you don't bump your head, you're not learning. You're not. You know what I'm saying? You're not. And like you ain't learning nothing. You remember, it's like that one dude, oh man, oh yeah, man, can't nobody whoop me. Can I, I'm the coldest basketball player. Yeah. Until they take them on the road. And then you know what I'm saying? And show them so they take them to the streets on the world. And the real niggas buy all this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, go on up in there and show them what you got, pretty boy. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then you get up in there and then you flunk. <laughs> and you find out that everything's a growth process. But then you learn something. You learn you not. You don't get you, you don't you don't you don't take it to the heart and be it may be funny yeah. because you know what I'm saying, hey, you know, hey, you know, everything in life, you know, you you, you, you got to live with laughter. Laughter is the, is the biggest thing in life, you know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, but at the same time, with that laughter, you also learn, you know what I'm saying? Also, when somebody on stage telling a joke, you know what I'm saying, and you laugh, you got to realize it's a message in that joke. <laughs> so, you know, it was a message when that nigga flunked, then we laughed, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and that's what we want you to know. You're going to bump yourself, you know what I'm saying? You just got to keep going. You got to get out there and meet people. Just because this one person said they can do something, don't rely on that one yeah. person. I always gonna have your you gonna have multiple marbles in your bag. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like square business to get out there and, and get to it. You know what I'm saying? And one day you might just stumble across what you might what you're looking for. There he go. Cause you know think about it. If you had everything that you wanted right, right. now, and everybody knew your name, your name and lights, everything you got, you'd be bored. Yeah. You would feel unchallenged. You wouldn't feel. Uh, the need to, 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 to dig inside yourself uh, to overcome. And to be honest, you would feel like you're missing out on something. Right. You wouldn't feel alive. Right. You wouldn't feel the, the faith base. So it's okay. It's a journey. Just keep going because, you know, you don't know where we're going to be at in five or ten years or uh, one or two years or even right. one play can change everything. Oh, yeah. One play. So it's just a matter of keeping that. And I tell you, just, you know, everybody, you know, just be positive. And just put in the work. Do what you're supposed to do. Give your best effort on everything. Be happy for others. Clap for others. Right, you know, right, it's okay right. to be proud of other right, people. Right. You know, it's okay to be encouraging. It's no, su it's no such thing as number one. Nah. How? Explain to me how. That's, First of all, you got entirely too much media content. That's a mental and a slave mentality. The number one spot. It's a system. That system designed for the number one spot. That there's no number one spot. No it's there spot. for everyone. It's no number one spot. It's you got every art project competing at the same time. Everybody going. It's too many. It's seven billion people in the world. Mm -hmm. People are gonna like what they gonna like or experience what they gonna experience when they gonna experience. Mm -hmm. So is it if you think everybody's gonna get on one accord at one time and it that's not gonna happen. That's why it's just about being true to what you what you're doing. Be true to your element. And man, just just rep it. You know what I'm saying? We rep this DFW to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and I tell people all the time. It's like um you from Dallas. I'm from Dallas. So if I'm doing something, I don't have to tell you about Dallas. You right, know, right. you from Dallas. Right. So let me go out here to Washington uh -huh. and they're gonna be more apt. They not from Dallas. Right. You see what I'm saying? So just have it's a big world. Man, there's seven billion people in the world. It's it's two hundred and four countries. The United States is three percent of the world. The United States is three hundred and thirty three million people. United States smile. When you start traveling, when you get on the road and you really realize like I'm talking about travel yeah. in a car. For real. You you realize nigga, it's it's your smile. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't travel in a car to New York, mm -hmm. Indiana, you know what I'm saying, some yes, more places, you know what I'm saying? Tennessee, mm -hmm. Atlanta, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Road Houston. Travel. Yeah, you know road what I'm saying? Travel. I am yeah. road travel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm running, man it's like damn there was a rolling stone, goddamn it. <laughs> yeah. But you know, 
it's smile, you know what I'm saying? And when you really get outside and really like when you get to that water, you know, yeah. you realize, you know what I'm saying, hey man, you 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 ain't nothing but a small fish in a in a big ass pond. It's a man. big world. <laughs> like Africa got fifty four countries in Africa. Uh -huh. Africa has supported like Corner Central. Uh, one of my biggest markets is Kingston, Jamaica. Right. You know, uh, Naomi Calvin, Lila IK, uh, Coffee, you know, the uh, Protege, the whole Indig family, right. uh, Jazz Elise, uh, you know, uh, Zaya, uh, Naomi's brother, uh, Matt, uh, Naomi's mom and dad. I'm a huge Naomi Calvin. I love right. Naomi Calvin. <laughs> Naomi Calvin. Is Naomi Calvin, man, is one of my biggest inspirations just oh, in right. life. I just love Naomi. Um, you know, her mom, uh, Carlene Davis, and her dad, Tommy. Tommy. I'm just saying because Jamaica has, you know, Carrie Corner Central. Right. Like, when it first going there, you know, you got Shelly Ann Frazier, mm -hmm. Rihanna Williams. You know, and they giving, you know, Shikari, you know, right. her up time on the track. And that's just one island. You know, like if you think about the Virgin Islands, British Islands, you got British Islands, you got uh, American Islands. Uh, I'm sorry, no, no, the, the, the British Virgin Islands and the American right, okay. U.S. Virgin yeah, yeah, Islands. Yeah, U.S. Virgin, yeah. I know what you're talking about. So, you the, know what I'm saying? The world. Right. This thing globally, because the internet, WWW, World Wide Web, the World and Wide close Web. To us. Oh, yeah. That's what, <laughs> I'm sure when you think about Jamaica, that's what, two, three miles, uh, uh, two, three hours from Miami? Miami. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's all a plane ride. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? And that's just, a lot of the culture comes from Jamaica. A lot of the culture. Uh, back. When you think about the Patra breeds, back when Babsy, who uh, used to manage Shaba Ranks, and uh, Patra, uh, which was uh, short for Cleopatra, yeah, you know what I'm saying, and they changed the '90s uh, when you seen Janet Jackson wearing the Patra braids, yeah, yeah. And, and Poetic Justice, you yeah. know, and uh, uh, you see the Sean Paul and the whole reggae yep. uh, movement. Um, Shaggy, man, it's just yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, what, uh, what, what, what's my boy name? Uh, Shaba, Shaba Rank. Yeah, that's one of Bab. Yeah. Cause Babsy brought Shaba and a uh, Patrick. Yeah, like Babsy and Babsy's still like a government official out there yeah. in Jamaica now. Man, okay, so you know what I'm saying, Babsy Grange. So uh, it, it, the world big, man. You know, we just got the. You know, we bring like I know I bring that Dallas stuff. You know. Uh, out there, man, especially with that movie stuff, and that's yeah. what it's about just connecting. Yeah, that movie, yeah, and being able to incorporate it in your movie. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Niggas abuse. Right. You don't win that many film festivals without touching all those different markets. Nah, we won in Russia. Right. And, and, and it tripped me out because it, that, that Russian, well, I know that was a KGB. Right. Well, I know it was. Yeah. Because uh, that was in um, Moscow. Uh, if you're familiar with, like, Michael Jackson did a song called Stranger in yeah, Moscow. Yeah. Uh, once you get started to put projects in different countries, you do become, in a sense, you have government entities uh, that, that they do watch over that because every market is a you know a real thing. Court Coin Central didn't have you know we ain't. It was just a good movie, man. We right. weren't interested in telling the people to stand and like for your rights. Right, you know, right, we, right. We, we just made movies. Yeah, right? you know we weren't tripping up on that. That's crazy. They be trying to censor what you put out. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's a but, real it, thing. but but it's understandable. You know what I'm saying? Tell them saying I know how they be wanting to control what people watch. You know what I'm saying and stuff like well, that. They, they do it in America, right? I know. Like a I lot know. of people in America don't know the life is the Netflix that you see, ain't the Netflix that that Canada see, right? And that's just right up there. Uh, when you own a lot of them streaming services, some mm -hmm. of them are just US and UK. Right, I know some stuff you can't even stream on YouTube. Oh, you can't. Yeah. No, uh, well, YouTube kind of they kind of on some theirs. stuff. Yeah, yeah, they like uh, say you can't stream in this country on there. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, uh, they do with that. the territory restrictions because right, it yeah, is territory. Uh -huh. And you do have to have. Uh, mm -hmm. You you're absolutely right, Mister mm -hmm. Law. You absolutely so, right. So like, let me see. Okay, like, like out of all your body of work. Yes. What's your pride and joy song that 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 you just? Uh. Oh, I can't say that. Yeah, you um, can. I'm gonna tell you why. Cause each one had their own sentimental value. Uh, each one was a work. What was that? What was that one that was just real sentimental? Oh to you? man, I like them all. I, I, I know just, you, that's cool. You like them all. <sighs> Man. Well, which one was that one that was just real sentimental to you? Mm. Yeah, well, I'm gonna break it down. <laughs> Everybody got they they favorite, and I like uh, even my publishing. Uh, when it's all said and done, it's over 400 records. There's very few artists who have over 400 published. I know Young Baller, who's a producer. Yeah. Young Baller got like I believe by he had like 800. I know uh, Me, Tom, and Chief is over 400. Okay. Um, you know, I'm just saying this is for you know numbers. Yeah. Uh, I think if you got one, you're winning. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, I think right. one. 
Man, if you was to ask me a personal favorite one, I would say one I like is uh, off my album. Um, mm, uh, I like the song I did with uh, my god sister Lasandra, who's one of my favorite people in the world to work with. Look, working with Lasandra. Okay. Uh, we did a song off um, Long Memory Deep Pockets, but you can stream that too. <laughs> uh, called uh, yeah, that Long Memory yeah, Deep yeah. Pockets. I like that one. Um, we did a song called I'm Gonna Get Mine. Okay. You know, and um, that's one of my favorite ones because it's just so, you know, she coming on there saying you're wasting, you're wasting your time. Right. Uh, I'm a hustler. I'm going to get mine. Shine and shine and shine and shine in. You know, all it's just like what, what it's saying is like if people try to down talk you. Right. It's like you're wasting your time. Right. You're trying to tell me I can't do something. Right. You know, I'm a hustler. I'm going to take the challenge. You right. know what I'm saying? We're going to win. You're not... You know, you're not finna limit uh, the hustler. And I believe that that kind of summarizes just everything as it's still ongoing to where, you know, I've never really gotten a media push, you know. And to the, me the media push. Yeah, because I just always like to be kind of a behind the scene type person. Right. You know and then that's like a lot of us, the OGs in Dallas. Yeah, but I know all of them. Right, like, right. Like Skip Cheatham and the, right. uh, even when uh, Money Loved them. Yeah. Used to do it big, big. Yeah. That's my dog. Yeah. Did all that. I seen you did thing with Bowleg. I mean, a Bobo yeah. Luciano. These are my real people, yeah. like you. Yeah. Like I really, you know. So it's the people that know that we know. Yeah. You know when I can, you know, reach out and, you know, what, you know, if God got different things, you know, for different people, you know. And then I understand the truth of the matter is, so uh, what the artists get. Hot moments, what maybe two to two, two to four years? Yeah, you know, when man, you I had my, two to five years. my first album when I was eighteen years old, man. Right, right, brother, that's been a long time ago. Been a long, long time ago. So you know, you know I don't expect to come on here, you know, with my gold on and my diamonds and just looking this good and this handsome and just expect to get on the stage and rock and swoon. Bro, I'm gonna let them youngsters get right, out there right. and do their thing, but I can. Do do what I'm, I had my moment in the right, sun, right, brother. Right. You know we didn't have the internet like that. Right, like, if right. we did, trust me, bro. You'd have right. seen shows. You'd have seen. Right. Oh my goodness, right. that'd have popped. Say, like, brother, <laughs> was that a hundred thousand on MySpace? You know you can add the road music. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then show sure, out time right there. You know the good work he's doing. Yeah. But the point that I'm making is, brother, I'm proud of y'all, man, and I support y'all. We doing. The, the movie thing like we got Kiana uh, Rogers you know we yeah, got Justin yeah, you know we yeah. doing the after quarantine right uh, that movie's coming, coming, coming next with the soundtrack yeah uh, I just like I say by the time that uh, if today is Friday you gonna see the, the album should be dropping Monday right you know what I'm saying so by the time you see this this album gonna be out so you got to stream my album which possibly could be a, a, a last one for me uh, you know I got 24 records on there right you know, uh, and that one is what it is. Like you see me now, man. Whatever your opinion is, bro, I ain't too good for the hood or too bad for the suburb, right. brother. So, man, I'm gonna go wherever, I'm gonna fit so in, and do my thing. Who inspired you along your journey, man? Who been rooting for you now? Who been in your corner? You know what I'm saying? Through my, your journey, my family. Yeah, after really. my mother, my father, right? Uh, my unofficial mentor, Master right. P. Yeah, uh, man. So, man, P, P, man, you can listen to P and get so much life game. You can just listen to uh. it. You can play No Limit. But, but, I'm going to say this. I am organically <coughs> a Jay-Z and Master P fan. <coughs> organically. Organically. See, so they, if they I was going to ask you, yo, your top three, that's your top three. Yeah, Jay-Z and Master P, nice. Those are my guys. I, first, I can tell you where I picked them up at. Wasn't nobody rocking with Jay-Z when he dropped Reasonable Doubt. I got the first one print up of Reasonable Doubt. Jay Z had did they first did two th uh, ten thousand of them. If you look at the first reason for that one is a bullet. It's not the one with his picture on there. That's the second printout. He right. hadn't even got at that record was still on Freeze Records. That's one about rocking with Jay Z like that. Right, right. But right, I like right, Jay Z. Right, right. right. Cause he, I mean, you stating fast because you know what I'm saying. When we, yeah. <laughs> I was originally a Jay Z fan. Like right. before he he got me with that line on politics as usual. When he said, y'all feel a uh, N-word struggle, y'all think a, a brother love to hustle behind the wheel, trying to escape my trouble. That was different. Yeah. His sound was different than vibe. And I, you know, from a street guy perspective, you can see yourself right. in the car trying to escape some trouble. Yeah. And I was like, well, I imagine I, I wouldn't like to escape some trouble. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> go home, you know, and let him keep going. And then Master P, shoot, P was rocking since. I mean, if you really a big fan of P, you heard uh, Bastard Child. 
Yeah. See, we ain't talking about ice cream man, yeah. and you got to salute Dre too. Yeah. Doctor Dre, cause you know that 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 ice cream man is that in between the sheets beat. Right, I know from yeah. a chalet. So technically, yeah. Dre is responsible for a lot of success. People then, but P first to me. If y'all ever go back, go. He's got the database now. Type mm -hmm. in Master P Bastard Child. You can't tell me P one spitting, and you just like man, this guy's you know really doing this thing. Yeah. And then Nas. I first heard Nas on the Street Fighter soundtrack, which was a jamming hip hop classic. You can, Nas had a song called uh, Is that One the Street Fighter movie? Uh, yeah, from the first Street Fighter movie. Yeah. That soundtrack, Ice Cube is on there, Raz yeah. Cass, uh, Dion, uh, yeah. and <laughs> And that Nas was just, I think he had just dropped Elmatic. Of course, Elmatic didn't just hit down south like that. But he had that song, 101, and it was just jamming. And ever since then, you know, and so what I'm saying just for me as a rap fan, because rap one, at one point it was looking like a fad. Right. See, now it's number one giant on the Super Bowl and Snoop and all right, of them. Right, At one point people kept saying rap was a fad, rap was a fad, which is why I have to salute Vanilla Ice. Yeah. Dallas, rapper. Hit record Ice Ice Baby, video shot in Deep Ellum. Almost a billion views, over 500 million views in our time right. on YouTube right. with Ice Ice Baby. And Can't still doing it in multiple movies, films. Man. You, I mean, I'm talking about funny films. I'm talking about all type of films. Vanilla you know, Ice is yeah. so, You know what I'm talking about? And he's like, from Dallas. Vanilla Ice man. changed the world on so many accords. First of all, he crossed over first. Right, right, right. Rap was right. against the ropes. It, Vanilla Ice took it to a whole new audience and then even from the extortion that happened with Death Row. Right. Wouldn't have happened without them, you know, doing what they allegedly hung him over the the, the railroad. Right, right, right. And, and, and stuff. And Ray Field him. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I, sure. But you know what? Vanilla Say, Ice is history. Man, speaking of that, speaking of, speaking of talking about history, man, don't you know Suge Rap? Suge Knight. Suge Knight. I can believe it. No, no, he was on, he was on, he was on, um, uh, MC Hammer album. Oh, which one? Funky the, Head, huh? It's the Hammer. Funky Head, huh? Yeah, it's Funky Head, huh? Yeah, yeah one we got. Uh, uh, I, man, it's that go on there and listen oh, to the man. album. I'm, a matter of fact, I'm gonna find it for you. I'm gonna shoot it. See, that nigga should rapping on that boy album. I got the tape. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, MC yeah, Hammer yeah, album. Yeah. I got it. You yeah. know, cause, yeah. Should night rapping on that mug. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. Man, Hammer. Yeah. Man, <laughs> Hammer. That's that Oakland, man. But that's, <laughs> that's that old time, man. Man, say. Like, man, Hammer had Dion out there doing the same. Salute to Code Prime and yeah. all the good work he doing with them youngsters out there at Jackson State to the world. And, and my, uh, my, my oh, boy, man. he worked on the project for, uh, 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 Ice, ice, vanilla ice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I did an interview with him, my boy Dave, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah Super Dave. Super Dave. Yeah, yeah, Super Dave been putting it down, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Super Dave, like Super Dave Spliff Wayne, mm -hmm. been putting it down over there, you know, mm -hmm. with uh, Bruce Wayne and Lady Savage down, you know what I'm saying? Lady uh, Savage, she a beast out there in West, man. man. So, hey, I need to get on the show, man. She man. understands. She need to come on over here, man. Stop playing with me. Salute to so, Lady Savage. Let's, let's 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 take it here. You know what I'm saying, okay? Mm -hmm. Like um, salute the Queen T B Miss Man. Salute the oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiffany Diamond, R I P. Man, you know R. what I'm saying? Tiffany Shout Diamond. out to all the like, man, all the female artists. You know all the queens. You know what I'm saying? That bless the mic. I like Uno Lo so too. I, and I like I like Bodega too though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like and, and, and I ain't gonna lie to you, man. That mother boy, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Cool Money Duck. Yeah. And nigga, uh, sleazy bees. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Man, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of them out there, man. Like Miss G, I've been, I've been yeah. saying, man. Uh, hey, Pinnacle, a lot of man yeah. say, hey, man, Shout hey. Shout out to Lady Heather. Mm -hmm. She, she, uh, went hard with with me on those albums. Yeah. yeah. Salute to Drastic, man. Drastic, a real one from Florida, man. And man. Dallas and Cedar Hill, man. It's so many, man. Yeah. Man, shout out to all y'all. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna keep, we gonna tap in with all y'all, cause we will be on the whole tape with all y'all. <laughs> but let, let me see. Okay, so like with S E J. Yeah. We okay with, with the S E J. You know what I'm saying? Break it down for me. Well, my name is Sammy. Right. So it's uh, Sammy got everybody jamming. Jamming. That's where that first right. came through. And the street director came from actually from DJ Drop from Definition. Shout DJ. out DJ Drop. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Uh, Drop, like you know, I would like I said, I did the first D Definition DJ video because they, them working with Corey, them those right. guys really monopolized and pushed that boogie movement and then bank backed it on the radio because 
uh, drop at the inside to get some of the greatest DJs like K Rock, you know what I'm right. saying? Big Daddy and the DJ, right, uh, right. Lex, who you know did his work Shout with Trey D. Shout out to the DJ. Shout out to the DJ. DJ. Deuce. Well, yeah, uh, Papa Run out there. He got his plaques. Beast, man. <laughs> yeah, he just got his rocks. <laughs> he just uh, got his motherfucking, motherfucking plaques over there. <laughs> salute to uh, Jay, who did the production for uh, Cardi B. Yeah. Jay White and uh, Jay Lee White. Lee 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 Jason Lyrics. Oh, oh, man. Jason Lyrics and them. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dude, hey. Man. You know so, what I'm saying? so I was leaving the club one day. I forgot what club it was because at that time, you know, street director was going through and Drop was just like, man, and I appreciate Drop because Drop was just like, man, every time I look at you, are always out here in the streets <laughs> with, that, with that camera. Mm-hmm. And Drop was out there with Sway and all them. And I say, man, you know something? You show sure right. Every time you look up, I am always out here in the street with this camera. I'm just calling myself the street director. That's where that came from. So salute to my boy DJ yes. Drop. Man, yeah, shout out to DJ Drop. Drop man. You know what I'm saying? I so, remember, like I say, DJ it's Drop. always a story, you know, because DJ Drop is like Palm Beach. You remember yeah. Palm oh, yeah, Beach? Yeah. DJ Drop is, yeah. hey man, when you look at <laughs> just his impact. Right. To have the thought to organize so many great minds and have those strong minded man because you got the uh, definition uh djs you had uh all of those djs crew it was a bunch of them uh including tony neal and all of them the core djs but this before they got really to that you yeah, know what i'm yeah. saying palm beach and palm beach you had to perform yeah and that was coon right coon delaney coon was the coon was over there too yeah. and he it was over there top cat mm-hmm. oh you know what i'm saying that you know but you know uh dj drop was at uh palm, palm beach. beach too yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. You had to perform. We had performers oh. like Ducky Duck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People had people, motherfucking mascots and shit yeah. out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Young hustlers. You know what I'm saying? You had the finest of the finest. They used to have you on roster cards. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the the clubs was already packed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They had the good drinks. You know the mo wet. You know what I'm saying? The mm-hmm. Southern Comforts. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Working. <laughs> Working, but working, grinding. Nah, but you know those the good old days, man. But like, okay, so. The floor is yours right now, man. I'm gonna let you mm-hmm. want to say anything that you want to say, anything you want to get off of your chest. And before we get out of here, I'm gonna ask my question that I always ask. Yeah, man. Uh, salute to everybody. Um, Lil Kane, you know. Salute to Lil B. You know. Salute to Cotton Mouth. Salute to Jizz No. Salute to the whole city of Dallas, Fort Worth. Salute to the world. If I ever came across you in any capacity, including right now, salute to you. Thank you for supporting Empire Thing Records. Thank you for supporting SCJ. Thank you for supporting the Street Director. Uh, if you don't know me, thank you. You know, I pray that uh, first impressions, I pray that this was a good first impression. And we're going to keep this thing rolling. Quintessence of the movie out. After quarantine, the movie coming next. Uh, check me out. I'm on all streaming platform. SCJ Parentis is the Street Director. You can get all of my catalog, all 20 plus, 26 total, 500 See, rounds. 21, you say, okay, so I'm 26. You, okay. you know, because, you know, back then, you remember yeah. we was rapping on other people's beat. Right. Uh, shout out to John John, the drummer boy. Shout out to all my people who who been riding. Right. You know what I'm saying? Who, who you know, and we're going to keep making this history. You know, we're going to keep growing. We're going to keep evolving. Uh, if you want to better yourself, man, it ain't nothing you can't do. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my cousin, Eric. You know, shout out my cousin Anwar, my cousin Chris, my cousin Anthony, my cousin Tobias, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to all y'all, you know. Shout out to my family, man. Shout out to the people who, you know, we may not be seeing eye to eye, man, but, you know, we still, you know, respect for what we got going on. Right, 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 right. Facts, facts, facts. We just going to keep this thing moving, man. We just going to keep growing, you know, and it ain't no limit to what... You know, we going to do. Shout out to you, Mr. Well, Lawler. Appreciate it, you appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Shout out to this great show because it's only going to keep growing. So I'm thankful to be in the archive of month. Have uh, you break this down or right. present it. Because like I say, it don't matter if you get one or two uh, views or one or, uh, one or two trillion views. Over time, man, the, the truth is the truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? And God is real. Be- you real. Believe in yourself. Thanks. And as long as you do that, believe in, think about it. Believe in you, God believe in you, I believe in you, Mr. Lawton believe in you. That's four people right there. That's four people. Don't nobody else believe in you. You got four people right there that believe in you. So, man, go be great. You can accomplish anything you put your mind to. And from me to you, love and respect always. 
and that's going to transcend time. Right. Still an empire thing from your boy SCJ, from the street director. And we taking this to the whole world, and we're going to live forever. Because art lives forever. Artists, listen to me. And I'm going to say this. He asked what's on my mind. Uh -huh. Be true to your art. Right. Because when you dead and gone, this art that's still going to be here is going to represent you. Be true to that. Don't cater it to no group. Because when you look at art, uh, Vincent Van Gogh sold one painting his whole life. But if you asked about him by art historian, he's considered one of the greatest artists Facts. of all time. He sold Facts. one painting in his life. Facts. Don't get caught up on that because the art is going to stay the same. The generations and the audience is going to change. So make sure that's a strong representation of you. Even on social media, everything you write, type, and portray, bro, that's going to outlive you. People are going to be watching that and reading what you type and what you're seeing and what you're doing three and four hundred years from now. So just be true to those elements, man, and be true to yourself. Love one another, man. Stay focused and just do the best you can do. That's from your boy, SCJ. Man, you heard it. You know what I'm talking about first. You know, and shout out to my uh, knucklehead cousin, Lil' Kane, man. You Lil know Kane. what I'm saying? That boy character, man. But they still got love for him, man. That's my boy. Man, so, man, but, Kane, man, bang. Yeah, man. Okay, so, man. Salute to Jason Shine. Shane the Yeah, man. Salute to Jonas. If y'all was, okay, so before I get up out of here, I always ask this question before I close out. If you was in my shoes, what question would you ask yourself that I didn't ask you? I would ask, how cool is Mr. Loudon River? <laughs> and the answer to that is be, man, cooler than the freezer. <laughs> cooler than, than, than the winter in Texas, man. Cooler than that winter storm, man, that, that was below zero. Cooler than uh, sub zero in Alaska. So this, hey, man, this is a real brother. He going to continue to grow. Y'all artists come on up here, tell that story. Let's document this and support this man. I just had, I don't even do interviews. I had to come out and support this man. And y'all do me a favor. I say this, please. Check out Naomi Cowan from Jamaica. She is just like, I tell you, I'm on Naomi page, uh, IG every day. I listen to her music. Right. Naomi inspires me in real right. life. She's beautiful. She's talented. And I feel like Naomi Cowan is uh, the future of music. And I yeah, have no we gotta problem. We got to bring her on up. We got to come on up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And to tell everybody out there, man. Y'all need to start getting to my live chat. You know what I'm saying? We be doing the live chat too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And make sure y'all hit the uh, the, uh, the like button. Make sure y'all get down there in the link in the description, man. Because I got the store ton of trends. And I also got the Shantae Way. You know what I'm saying? We got the store up in Winwood and all that stuff like that. Y'all got the hottest fashions. All that. Anything you want to catch down there. Also, make sure you check my description because you can also find my guests. Yeah. You can also find them straight right there. You can get straight uh, directly to them. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Also, you know, everybody stay true to life. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? You know, everybody stay big up. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, you know, like you say, I appreciate you, man, for coming out here, man. Like, you know, right. and, and like to the person who's been in my comments, he talking about I need to get Diamond D on her. He said, but also I have another dude in my comments talking about I need to also get Apostle Paul on her. Paul, so I'm looking for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Gator, I'm looking for y'all. You know what I'm saying? All right, but, your nephew, Brian. It's, and it's a lot, yeah. like like you say, a lot of y'all don't do interviews. So like I tell y'all, when I do these interviews, trust me, I'm really in there. I'm, I'm trying to get them. <laughs> so, but I'm going to get them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, you know, it ain't nothing but flowers. And like I say, nothing but flowers. Once again, say we love y'all. Appreciate the contribution you had to the Dallas legacy. You. And you know what I'm saying? For the ones who don't know, you know what I'm saying? If not, go back and do your research. You know what I'm saying? My boy, he's in now. Salute and like I say, you know what I'm saying? You heard Salute that. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, uh, stay lit to life. And we about this. Biatch! I was into street shit. Hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I wasn't gonna be shit. But I always knew that I would be.